So what happens, the guy in the Tesla was waiting for the spot, 
and then dude in that little matchbox car came and swooped the parking spot right yo you done lost before you start are you kidding me i have so many questions so many like who let her race why did y'all let her race knowing she had two left feet and who was recording it's giving her mama supporting her in this foolishness hannah is not a runner hannah's not a track star hannah need to be somewhere where she can be safe inside a building possibly with a helmet on she got a flamingo spirit she got a giraffe spirit on her she need to be somewhere doing something safe cheer her own uh coloring cheer her own uh doing a puzzle doing some math and a spelling bee playing the instrument where she not standing up y'all got to know your children's gifts and support them in that this 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 right here is a bruce this is a bruce this girl could have seriously hurt herself doing something that she is seriously not good at and this is not all right and y'all out of order for this hannah don't run no more that's not your gift y'all come on in baby come on in to come on in. Come on. That type of gig over here, sweetie. So guess what? This will separate the little girl from the women. Now let's get to it. Y'all keep on coming in. Get out just your staff tonight. I need y'all to share the live, share the live, share the live. I know y'all not used to us being here on a Thursday, but we're here on a Thursday because we missed last night. And we could, oh. miss, we could not miss this week. So we want y'all to share the live. Please share the live. Y'all know my page is down because they don't want me posting certain stuff. So I can't go live from my page. I can't go live from my point of view page. So it's just like real crazy. So I need y'all to share this live. Share, share, share. Yeah, the line, and let's in talk. Other, in other words, share the motherfucking line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, Wednesday, Jim. Hey, everybody. Hey, Anthony. Anthony, did you have fun in um, Orlando? What's up, Sir Phil? <laughs> That's my judge right there, Sir Phil. Hey, Sir Phil. Hey, Taryn. Wednesday, what you do yesterday? And who else is there in here? He, Joshua. Hey, Raven. Hey, son. My son Anthony Shalanda, y'all share the live. Let the folks know we uh we here at our point of view. Mm -hmm. We finna chat it up a little bit, child. Neil, what's going on with you? How you doing? I'm doing amazing. I have one more day to spring break. Mm. Are y'all spring break? Yet? No, we go spring break next week, and I'm so happy. So it was really good. It's been a good week. 
So I'm okay. just excited about the things that's going to come after this show and after this weekend. I forgot we was off last week, huh? For, uh, for my birthday. Yeah, we was off last week. Hey, Nima. Nima's going to come in here and, uh, after a while and talk to us about Glamorous and um, the changes at Glamorous. Uh, Dominique, how, y'all, um, how you been? It's been a minute since we've been. I just remember we was off last week. Mm-hmm. I, I'm good, honey. I'm here. Refreshed? It's feel refreshed. Been drinking Trent's Nut daily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my God. So before you ask me, you know what I've been doing. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> putting out. Okay, putting putting right on out. Drained, honey. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Um, I was out celebrating all week since last week, celebrating and working. My birthday, my birthday was on Sunday. I was in San Antonio. I came home and um and actually came home and did nothing. And then I went to New Orleans on Sunday on my actual birthday where I hosted Miss Louisiana Newcomer and mm. a um, classic. I had a really good time. I started drinking from the time I landed to the time I left. Damn. I did. I, as soon as I landed, we went to um, Up and Adam and um, we ate at Up and Adam and I started drinking. The bartender came right to the table with my drink as soon as I walked through the door. I love Up and Adam. Shout out to Adam and uh, Rashawn. I got to see them while I was there. Shout out to Chad and Corey, the owners of Louisiana US Today and um, Pageantry System. Shout out to um, Yasha Alexander and her family for um, such a wonderful time at her house. Child, I walked out of Yasha house cross-eyed. Let me tell you. <laughs> Baby, I walked out of that cross out because they kept they played this drinking game called 21, and one of them was called Pyramid. And honey, I walked out of there with my eyes like this. <laughs> but I had a really good time. It was a real good time. I ate good and everything. New Orleans was right on time for me. I enjoyed myself. Shout out to New Orleans. Yes, I can't wait to come back. I asked my leader, I said, well, I want to go back, but I don't ever have time because I'll be working for much. Yeah. Thanks, thank you, Roderick. Roderick. But um, I'm still celebrating. I go to Dallas this weekend, actually tomorrow. Yeah, I'm working in the Rose Room. So if you're in Dallas, come and see me in the Rose Room. And um, I'm hosting a 5K run Saturday. Um, five a trans trot trot for trans 5K run sponsored by Lululemon on uh, um, Saturday. So I got to be the weekend child. Oh, look at you, never not working. Trap for train. Yeah, trap for train. Trot on trains to see what the end is going to be. Is it, is it for train or for trans? Trot on trains. Trot for train. Hey, Loretta. We're going to get Loretta up. Uh, Loretta come and join us in, uh, on our Because, uh, you know, she she is a um, political buff and a... Um, and a tea buff child, so she she come on here and chat with us, honey. Come on, Loretta. Mm-hmm. All the other person I know got the name is Divine. <laughs> come on over here, babe. I seen a picture of Loretta Divine and uh, Shirley Rapp when they was rehearsing for Dream Girls. Uh-huh. I tell you, Loretta was letting Cheryl hold it. <laughs> baby, she was letting her. Hey, my absolutely beautiful. I'm at the post because I've been studying them. I'm bad about posting stuff. That is so funny. Hey, Nikki Diamond, Simone. Um, but once again, before we go on, y'all, please um, share the live, share the live, share the live. My page is down, my actual um, page, so I can't go live yeah. on my actual Chevelle Brooks page. And so any other page that is created by that page is down, so um, can't go live on there. So I will please ask that y'all please share the live and um, so the folks can join us here. On our point of view, that's why we need you to subscribe to the YouTube so you know we on when I'm out. Yeah. Yes, we need y'all to subscribe to the YouTube channel so it can give you the notification notifications and let y'all know that we're here, we're here, we're here, and we want to chat. Um, oh, Coco in here. Hey, Coco. Coco from SWV. You better go on tour. <laughs> Coco the maid. <laughs> Coco the maid in here. Um, Coco, you must be weak in the knees. Where have you been? 
Okay. Sipping Coco, you didn't come, but I that she had me on this new wine. I don't know what it's called, sugar. Mm. But if I tell you, it, it, it gets me where I need to be. Sure not, and I like it. It's time for hot topics. Uh -huh. Let's get to it. Child, um, I know y'all saw this um this bridge in Baltimore had collapsed the other day because of a um a, a boat going up under it and, and hitting it. I was gonna show the video, but that's how I couldn't do that. Um and I mean the bridge collapsed, and I know they found like six people dead um so far already. Mm -hmm. And but it's just like I gay. It's, it's it's sad because I it they know it's six people that's assumed presumed dead, but they only found two of the bodies, so they're still looking for the other four. They're still looking for them. Oh my god! And there were and there were cars submerged in the water, so yeah, it's that's tragic. I'm praying for those families, man. That got to be so tough. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Because there were that. construction workers on the on the on the bridge when it Didn't happened. The boat no, it couldn't fit up under there. Well, it was losing power. Oh. It lost it lost power a couple of times. So I'm thinking it was you know it was something mechanical, mm. and probably you know they couldn't Let steer it down. or control yeah. it to where you know it could avoid hitting the bridge. There's yeah. another video um, that's out that shows the. Um, like the boat going through and when it was losing power the power came back on and then it went out again and all that mm -hmm. debris it was like it was crazy and um i think it was chloe from chloe and haley mm -hmm. she had, um she had posted that her dad takes that bridge every um every day around that time to go to work and he overslept and um he woke up and he was upset about um, his mom not letting him, um, not waking him up because he overslept. And then they found out that that bridge had um, that had happened, and she had posted that on her on Instagram. Wow. wow, that could have been him. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It really could have. Um, Greg, did you like that orange tea? I've been drinking. That's my new drink when I go to the club. It's an orange tea. It's um, Jameson orange, and they love to get the people hooked on it. I had not eaten Mimi Chuck <laughs> during Queen. Y'all got to try that. Okay, and uh, then I was reading uh, Halle Berry went to the doctor, mm -hmm. and she was um, misdiagnosed. And the doctor told her she had the worst case of herpes he'd ever seen in his life. But she was in premenopause. <laughs> now, that is, it's so funny because it, um, when Desiree was going through her stuff, I would, I would say, no girl, go get a second opinion. Go get a second opinion. No, we're not, no. Cause they don't know what they talk. Go get a second opinion. I'm so glad she went and got a second opinion. This one probably was sitting up there thinking, all them husbands she done had and stuff, somebody done gave her herpes. She she was gonna blame it on Eric Bernay because you remember he had a sex addiction. <laughs> so she, you gave me herpes, the worst case they make. That is so crazy. These doctors gotta get it together, honey. They gotta really get it together. Um and she said uh, having sex felt like razor blades was in her pussy. Did you read who, this? Who's, she said that. She said the reason she even went to the doctor because she was having sexual intercourse and it felt like razor blades was in her pussy. So it's probably just vaginal dryness. Yeah, with the menopause, the wetness. Mm -hmm. pause yeah, so yeah, so she wasn't just getting as or maybe wet that was as she normally would. Maybe that and was so, the scat from the herpes. Well, when, when, when they found they out that it wasn't the herpes. Well, at the time, it was the worst case imaginable. <laughs> but 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 when she but when she but when she, okay so yeah, but, 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 but when he was so when he so when he, so so when he said that though was that at just at glance it had to be just when he saw it because it could not have been before he tested well yeah it, I don't think it could have been before he tested because I've never heard of women say I mean after he tested I mean I've never heard of women even say a child 
pre-menopause and my doctor thought I was had the herpes, but that's like a normal thing. Like before yeah. you go he saw that blister on her lip and just automatically. Oh come on, God. <laughs> he said your pussy got to look the same as your lip. This so is the doctor, the doctor is like, uh, what you call it when you self diagnose yourself? A hypochondriac. Hypochondriac. Damn. She walked around for years. I need you to run some tests. I need you to run some tests, honey. Child, Diddy has really been in the news this past week, two weeks. They um went and um raided his house in Miami, and um I think in, in L is it L A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, L A. And uh, so they put out today that they had uh, a credible um credible um. What I'm trying to say, source, sources to, for reasons why they went into the houses, and that's why they went into that into the houses, and they um, put his sons in handcuffs, and that they only said that they were only two there so far, but I haven't heard anybody else being there. He wasn't there, but I don't know something about sex, sex trafficking and and all that kind of stuff, child. That, that is, what are you doing? The thing with Diddy, where I feel is, well, not really sorry for him, but I know it's more to the story because when the FBI and the CIA, when all this type of people come at you, they already got their case before they even mm -hmm. get to you. They mm -hmm. not like the local police or the state police that get you and then build their case prior to court. Because they don't watch you, they ain't got enough evidence before they go and do this shit and raid your place. They already got enough evidence. They have something. Yes. So they have. I'm just over it that I still wasn't in the right place at the right time in the early 2000s. Me neither. I would have loved to be at a Diddy party. I would have loved to be watched in all those rooms with them cameras and stuff. And I would have been loved. Yes, yeah, they say they got cameras in the, uh, he had cameras in the uh, house room. and stuff. Every room. So everything is about to come out now. Wow. Then um 50 cents baby mama, she's um in the um in the lawsuit, yeah. her and um uh, little Miami, they're both in the lawsuit and saying they was um working for Diddy, getting paid for um pay for their services and trafficking stuff. And y'all think that's why he gave her that car? They were really dating. Absolutely, absolutely. But see. Part of me think all oh, that's subjective because some people, some people run to the spotlight because if I, if I tell Trent, oh, Diddy got a party, it's gonna be X, Y, Z going on. Some people are going to go because it's a Diddy party because Diddy's parties has always been known for this. Uh -huh. like, it ain't like it's just all of a sudden just being known as this freak party, this orgy, this drugs, X, Y, Z. It's he's always had that um, stereotype about his parties. So I think I don't know. Part of the thing is gonna be hard to prove that these people just was forced beyond their will to do some of these things. Um, I don't. I don't they're not saying everybody was forced beyond their will. You know, some of this stuff was uh, was done willingly. You know, but some of this, I'm, I'm assuming, allegedly, some of this stuff was done unwillingly. These, oh yeah, okay. The testing and the roping and all that kind of stuff. Listen, mm. Puffy no, celebrated 25, 25 years of the No Way Out tour. 25 years, two years ago, so it's actually been out 27 years. And now I think it's tour. People are finally finding a way out because for anybody he's ever come in contact with, they ain't had no way out. All his <laughs> artists broke. Shine allegedly took a charge for him for 10 years for a reportedly $1 million at the time. In the 90s, that was a lot of money. Or the early 2000s, that was way more money than it, than it equates to now. So no one has never really won around Puffy. So now this is, I think it's, they about to find a fucking way out because if Puffy indeed did these fucking crimes and he think he's so big in this life and he got so much money that he could do any fucking thing he want to, then uh, even Willie <clears throat> from day 26 went live and he was just making a joke about certain stuff, but then he did say that they he robbed them of their money too. And he mm -hmm. well, I don't know that. 
All those Bank of the Band groups got robbed of their money. All everybody, those, everybody, Dirty was. Money Crew, all them, Bank of the Money, mm. Candy Cane, all those girls just mm. one of the dirty. I used to work with one of the Dirty Money girls, and she didn't even have a fucking car. I just had to go pick her up and do her makeup and take her where she was going. And at the time, I had an old beat up ass 2002 Chevy Impala. We putting up to to venues and shit and that ugly shit like she she was barely scraping because she started puffing and gave money out. You know, he still got this shit. So oh, I, man. Wait, man. I, I can I can definitely see that happening because if a if a big ass male group like TLC they was raping them across the coals, driving rail fours, the other little groups. That is cold, but it's a lot. And then Fifty Cent's the girl Daphne Joy, who's in the um the lawsuit with with um I'm gonna say Sex in Miami. What little what I ain't little Miami. Um, she's Fifty Cent's baby mama, so you know Fifty Cent will make all type of jokes and everything about everything that's going on. Did it? So this came out. And he made a post um, saying, "He, I didn't know you was a, I didn't know you was a sex worker. See you little sex worker laugh out loud, yo. This shit is a movie, and that's his, um, his baby mama. So you know now he wants sole custody of their child. So she made a post saying that you know she moved to New York. Basically, she moved to New York, moved a mile, a mile away from him, and he only seen the um, baby twice." And she's um she's tired of um trying to paint this picture for him and he's abused her and raped her and um now you want sole custody of our child because of um because of uh, accusations that are false accusations mm. and the thing is 50 cents will be coming because want to tell you they they might be on puffy today but they might be on you next year hmm just like they said, they on Jay Z. Right. I tell you, Jay Z is on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Z said, "Bitch, I ain't got nothing to do with that." Uh -uh. <laughs> okay. So it was. It was. It, it, it's just crazy how everything is unfolding for these people. And, and and stuff that was he got this, all these people involved in, like for real. You mean, know. But this this gonna allow Puffy to go through whatever you got to go through, whatever you did is gonna come to light. And now you will see whoever were your true friends, because your true friends will still check up you, even though they don't condone what you're doing. Are you okay? I'm here for you. You can. I'm. It's gonna allow him to see who those people are too, because. You he had people like um uh slim thug like stepping up to him saying like you know all of this is accused no charges have been made and y'all um it's our people that's condemning him um then who was it somebody said well what about his kids and stuff y'all don't think about that and like how this is affecting his kids and what people are saying but you can't blame the people that's coming on it because this is public knowledge. That what y'all expect from the the, the 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 media to do? Keep it quiet. Child, those kids be they they be alright because if Puffy was smart and had his lawyers do what they need to do, a lot of his things, a lot of his assets should be transferred to those kids already because they don't get they don't come out this money. Child, I'll be sure even made a post about to Quincy. And told him the door is always open. Come home. Child, I'll be sure you've been a deadbeat daddy all your life. He ain't been no deadbeat daddy. Child. But you got to know Kim was more in love with Puffy than she You know, he had more <laughs> money. Than was. That, that's what that was. Yeah. And I'll be sure you've been sitting right here jealous of the relationship that your son I'm built with this other man all these years. But he, he should have been, uh, he should have felt sorry. He may have felt like he may feel like he did a bad thing as to even letting him be that close to his child. Mm -hmm. And this is the things that, that he's supposedly doing. Yeah. So he may even feel even lower, you know? Yeah, I'll be sure you've been a bush queen because if this your child, it's your biological son. But we don't know really the relationship. Why make, a, why make an Instagram post about something like that? He said, come home, son. 
We call your son. Why, why would you make an Instagram post about it? Because you're going to be a bush queen. And see, you know what? People look at, like, young girls, like, young Miami, them is so impressionable. Like, girls see them and really want to be them. Like, this bitch got it going on. This nigga buying that bitch Birkin bags. He mm. buying that bitch Maybach trucks. He doing all this shit. That bitch living a life, man. She got it going on. And now she's fucking Im implementing in his case documents stating that she's the girl who go recruit people for him. You know, do the cocaine with them and every goddamn thing. So, while well, y'all looking at other people and, and, and want what they got, you don't know what motherfuckers doing to get that shit. Pace yourself. Mm. Pace think, yourself. This is a, it's just so crazy because I just, I've been to like different parties, especially when people do like their own little parties at their house, searching type parties. It's like, oh, brain, such such, oh, brain, this type of person. And here I am, you know, I bring this type of friend, this type of friend. Bitch, we're in that living our lives. Cause you want to bring people that look good are gonna be like have fun. You don't want to bring a wallflower with you. So I like when they say recruit, I'm I don't, I think it's like bitch, you want good time people to no, you you fire. know goddamn well they ain't what that mean. Uh, this on another party. level. He go pick out who he want. Go get him. Go get her. Whatever you, whatever they need, whatever they require. Get them, and, and, and they do it. Yes. What well, the people? The people been doing that for years. Everybody can do it on plenty level. People get them a drink. Get them a drink. Ain't, ain't no telling what's in that drink. Next thing you know, you in the Chinese book getting your ass told to pieces. <laughs> well, guess what? Some sometimes you know, I some go come to a head and all this shit go explode and it's doing that for Puffy right now. God damn, Puffy! Did he or did he not? It's doing, uh. it, and he is <laughs> and he is getting diddy. I mean, it, even um um, Stevie J made a post to Fifty about uh he want to square up and fight. <laughs> because of what 50 said and all that kind of stuff like that. It, it, it's crazy. 50 is very invested in it, though. Oh, child. That's where awesome. I get all my news from 50's page. 50 Cent is a butch queen. <laughs> yes, he is. Listen, is. Got, if y'all got time, 50 got time. It's crazy. Well, the thing is, 50 don't even have to be introduced to the conversation. He just adds himself to it. Just like a lot of the People last week on Facebook add themselves to shit that they didn't have nothing. Man, to Facebook was out of control <laughs> last week. It's like that person. It had nothing to do with them. Speaking of sex, sex trafficking and um and all that kind of stuff, RuPaul Drag Race star Shangela is in the news now, and she's being accused of sexual misconduct to um some of her fans, and it was um five of them that yes, the people heard. um saying that you know they would. Go to Shangela's room. It's the same stuff that happened with um Cherry, whatever name, Cherry Pie, and all of that kind of stuff. They get infatuated with who they with because they said that they were aware of who she was. Mm. And um she would drink them and drug them and, and try to have sex with them. Child. Now, isn't that every isn't that so many games on every night of the week though? All five said that peers nearly doubled their age and fresh off headlight and grabbing spots on their silver screen and award shows. Red carpets drank with them through the late hours of the night and into the morning. The accuser all said that they were acutely aware of Shangela's celebrity status. Three people said that they were aspiring drag queens. One of the sources claimed that they got so drunk they vomited in the hotel bed moments before they were allegedly assaulted in the same sheets. Nearly all accusers said it took them uh, at least a month to process their alleged sexual assault. I heard getting the shit fucked out too, but he should get got the vomit fucked out of them. But all uh, of this I be so I be hate to be the the naysayer and shit, but some stuff I think people know what you get into. She couldn't offer no, she couldn't offer no Birkin bag and all this. But she can offer you a ticket to RuPaul Drag Race show in Vegas, or you know, she they if they say they know what they knew what they was getting to, they was going out, they was having fun, they Damn could money. go and drink. I mean, what just? I mean, they sound like Robin Gibbons now. You go into the hotel room late <laughs> night. You can believe what Puffy doing, but we can't believe that it's Chancellor doing what she doing. But you no, know, I, 
I can believe it all. I just don't think it. But this ain't the first time this has been said about Shangela. We just skipped over the news a little bit. This ain't the first time we heard this shit. Shangela, a motherfucking freak. And she didn't know she was like a bird life. So she know in order to have sex with somebody, then more than likely she's going to have to, you know, spike a drink or two to get to get her rocks off. Well, I and three people who was aspiring drag queens, aspiring whatever. These bitches probably was trying to use her to try to put my name in there and they didn't get called or they didn't get what they wanted out of her. So now a month later, oh bitch, I think this bitch tried to take advantage of me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My food a whole so. Yeah. That is crazy. It's, Damn, and- Shangela. Shangela, I need you to get together and uh, have your um basic stuff. But what's funny is Tyra, Tyra, I saw it and I thought it was fake news. Then Tyra had posted, then she posted the article from Rolling Stones. And mm. Tyra had put Tyra been on it, honey. Tyra had posted the other day. Would you rather go to a uh, um a Diddy party or a Shangela uh, uh Shangela party? <laughs> Bitch, a Diddy party. I, if Diddy had one tomorrow, I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> she said, baby, I want I wanna go. Uh she said, what which y'all want where y'all wanna go? <laughs> I holla, child. I would like to bring your own bottle. Uh, uh, uh. It's, it's like the, the society that we live in now. I remember, like when when I was younger, sexual assault and all that was like so serious to accuse somebody of that. But now it's so many false accusations, and it's so like. I don't know. It's hard to decipher what's true and what's not. And now it's about like, oh, okay, she was assaulted. You take but you know, brain assault. But you know, the thing could be, though, okay, so, so let's just say that, you know, we're all together. You know, we're drinking. We get tipsy. And just say, like, you're just laid up on, you just sitting up on the couch. And then I start giving you head or something like that. Mm. You could claim that that was sexual assault. Mm-hmm. Because you could, because you could not give me permission or mm-hmm. consent to me doing that. Yeah. So but so that was up and doing all the things before you passed out. Yeah. But have, you, but, have that ever happened, Dominique? But no, oh no, 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 no. Let me tell you, one of my they 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 they, they are they are they are con- they're very con- coherent before I do anything that I do. Because I want I want them to get the full effect of what I'm about. they don't need alcohol when I do what I do. Oh what you do? Because baby it's gonna put them on a high. God damn. They say Shangela ain't got them people saw a month later. <laughs> yes, you do, Trey. Well, yes, you, you do. Never, you, you never know. She you, you you never know. You never. It's but you know, so, you know it just, but it just it, you know, and I'm not negating anybody saying that they were ex- assaulted because you know people are quick to say, "Oh, y'all victim shaming and all that yeah, stuff." Yeah. But you know, sometimes you know. They they may think that you know okay we're gonna go in here we're gonna check I'm gonna get what I want and but you know who know who who knows I don't know she, who knows listen Trey Son tell you something if 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 Holly Berry could have the worst case of herpes they ever known them mankind oh. <laughs> probably gave them some bumps and stuff too that lasted for a minute now Shanza, we're gonna need you to come to the front of the motherfucking <laughs> the front of motherfucking eye point of view bitch. You be just keep your little tiny ass dick in your motherfucking pants. Yo, yo neatly tucked motherfucking dick bitch with those motherfucking acorn ass balls, bitch. You need to keep that to your motherfucking self because those people don't they ain't trying to be drag queens, not fucked by a drag queen. Get yourself together, bitch, going around with date rate drill because you look like a motherfucking reborn uh Pee Wee Herman, the dun 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 looking ass bitch. Nothing to be Herman. No, which one uh uh the other one? With the, the little shorts and the headband, that bitch like Richard Simmons. Richard Simmons, yeah, that's what she give off. Richard Simmons seeds. <laughs> look, look, tainted black dick, black in the whole body. It's red. Oh, um, <laughs> oh that'd be that be the worst part when you with like a light skinned person and then your penis is dark or something. Like, Ugh. We're not talking about Michael Jackson right now. What, what, what were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> What is going on? Right. So, Chili Pepper was um, given a chance to go to the Glad Awards and um, award Oprah Winfrey with an award. And in that, in, during that time, 
I couldn't do this to my to to to, to auntie like that. But she took a tumble and almost took Oprah down. And uh, Oprah was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going down with you, baby. <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> I, know, I know y'all saw a child. But um, oh. so I'm glad she's okay. But baby, if I tell you, mama had tripped. I don't know what she tripped on, slipped on, or what. But what? she down. I wonder why, why would she do that? Like, in the moment, I wish you would have played the clip. But, you know, she looked high or something to me. Cause like, what would make you do that in that moment like that? Like it was like a no, Nobel. Forgot. But it you know, like, yeah, like it was a Nobel Prize that she had just won. No, no, but you don't. They didn't tell us this part though. Jennifer Hudson was in the corner saying, "I can believe I can fly." And she was doing a praise dance to it. <laughs> y'all, y'all, oh, yes, yeah. She had asked uh they I guess assume you know they always ask who they want people to come and uh present them awards with even at other award shows and she asked for chili pepper to come and she said not knowing that chili pepper um didn't fly so chili pepper been on the train for three days <laughs> baby if I tell you chili pepper had to be going home on that train with no phone, because I don't think Chili Pepper probably even have a cell phone. She got to at least have a flip. Oh, she got a beep or something. A, a two-way. Come on, Chili. She got some bad knees. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the floor was slippery. Maybe the floor was slippery, child. Don't do Chili like that. Maybe why are you running your ass up there like that? It was just but, I, I was so bizarre. We, we don't know. We didn't see. It. We didn't see it in sequence. But yeah, we didn't see it in sequence. So I wonder, like, cause if, when they when they showed the clip, they showed the clip and um, it's cut. Mm. So I don't, it's cut. I don't know, like you know when it happened. But then the clip that they have that they showed that went viral. You get to see her like it looked like she was coming up there after Oprah was already up there. So maybe she was coming to hug her or something at the mm -hmm. end of the speech. And then she tripped over something. No, you, was, you was lunging though. You was like you was running or something. Like you was running away from security or something. You just gonna hug. Listen. She looked like she had broke through security. She's 207 oh. years old. She lost her balance. Hello, equilibrium just completely off. Off. She came and walking here at the same time. But I well, have apparently she can't walk here or see. Yeah. I talked to some people that was there and they said um that she was fine afterwards and she was um she carried on throughout the night. So I know she said it. I hope she got to see Oprah. Oh she that's that, she that's that age cognac she was drinking, baby. She probably had to get back on the train and uh go back home because it was gonna take her three more days to get back. Well she can't read the signs at the airport or something. No, she don't like to fly. A lot of people that you know, reach a friend. That's, that's, that's why she don't travel because she don't like to fly. Mm, 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 mm. And it's been like that for years. Shout out to Savannah Westbrook. Hey you, I love you, Jud. Hey you, I love you. So, hey you. Oh, and I didn't even put the new one in there, dog. That's what I was supposed to do. Let me see if it's mm -hmm. in there. It's not in there, but I'm finna post. I'm finna put it in there. I hope um she's still in there. She is still in there. Um, so. I don't know many of you I know. You know, I really don't talk about, you know, these people too often over here at our point of view. But this pageant that they have in Atlanta is called um, Renaissance. We Y'all talked about it before on the show. And um, so... Who on that page? So, hold on. Let me, let me turn this down. Okay. I need to put this picture in here right quick. Uh, Y'all gonna act like that lady was not drunk and high, running the stage like that. <laughs> Y'all know those girls back in those days, they get zooted. They still get zooted. They just out she of the came in there with a flask full of liquor, straight liquor. Hey, man, I don't know. It was just embarrassing, though. Shout out to Chili Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> then people start getting mad, like all oh, that beautiful message Oprah had, and all y'all can focus on this chili falling. Baby, we like entertainment too. I like entertainment. I, it's nothing like seeing an old high drag queen. 
Baby, and if I what? tell you, she's allegedly hot. A whole eyes. <laughs> and Tilly made a statement. If you didn't know who Tilly Pepper was, you do know now. You know. Give it up. I'm up. glad that she was just having fun. And hell, I know that she all right. Mm -hmm. um, so said pages is called Renaissance in Atlanta, Georgia. And Tina Twirler, she's a um, newcomer to um, to the pageant scene. She's mm -hmm. from New York. She won the pageant in November. Her and um, her king, what's her king name? Uh, Scooby. Scooby was. Something like that. Uh, Scooby, 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 right? Yeah, Scooby. Scooby, and he's Raquel's son, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, so they won, I think, like in November. I first met Tina when she competed for Miss USA Bay, newcomer, I think like three years ago. And she um she has went on to do other pages such as Continental and um things like that. And so she went she won the pageant and then all of a sudden over the weekend, I think of Black America, maybe it was, mm. um the owner made a post and put up a new picture of the new queen. And I really don't remember what the post it was. Like Cardi B. I really don't remember what the post said about it, but uh, Scooby Lord, that's his name. Scooby Lord. And, um, but it was um, shocking that they had a new queen. Nobody never said anything or, um, or why. But we have Tina Twirler, who is the um, who was the crown queen in, in Atlanta, Georgia, here to tell us her side of the story as to why and what happened. So we want to welcome you here. We want to welcome Aunt Tina Schwartz. Hi, Tina. Okay. okay, we got applause tracks. <laughs> hey, come on, Trent. We got applause tracks. <laughs> Where did that come from? Hey, y'all. Uh, can y'all hear me? Yes. Yes. Hey, y'all. Uh, Welcome to my point of view. Thank you. Tina, what the fuck happened? Oh, child. What happened? Every night since it actually happened. Um, Well, my journey with Renaissance is just a very just interesting journey. Like um, Chevelle said, I'm very happy. I met Chevelle two years ago at US of a newcomer, and I recently completed in um, Miss Continental um, placed top seven out of my out of thirty eight girls. Randall personally reached out to me. Cassidy personally reached out to me. Hey, enjoy what you did at Continental. Please come out and my pageant. And I went. I did the pageant. I won. I wasn't expecting to win, so I, I would say that was my first mistake was just not having any expectations. But I won the pageant. I won. I won talent and I won the panel. So I won three of the categories and came back to New York and I wanted to get the ball rolling with everything, like with promo photos. So went to a photographer here. I've reached out to them to help me out with things like that. Wouldn't get responses in that nature of who to go to. And I took measures into my own hand and did a photo shoot, paid out of my pocket, like $300 made some amateur mistakes with the placement of the crown. Randall's like, mm, these are amateur, you can't do that. We're not, these aren't photo ready for you to do the Renaissance brand. I said, okay, we have the retreat coming up. I wanna come out there for 10 days. I really want you guys to get to know who I am as a person. And I really want you, they said, come out here, we'll get you the photo shoot. We'll handle everything for you. We'll make sure you look right. Went out there for 10 days, despite them telling me not to. Randall was like, oh, I don't want you to miss me um, in New York City. So he was like, just stay in New York. I was like, no, I want to learn. I want to grow. I'm very passionate about pageantry. And so I went out there. We got the retreat. <laughs> I was about the Renaissance retreat. Um, they definitely wore me out, and I just felt very personally attacked. I didn't feel as welcome as I thought I was. Uh, when, when you say they, who are you speaking uh, to? Randall, my court, Trinity, um, Scooby. The only one who genuinely like showed me love was Wendell. Um, but everybody's like, oh, you're new. You're very green, which I've accepted. 
And I made mistakes here and there, but I was always willing to learn and to grow. Came out of pocket to fly out there, hotel, all of that nature. Trying to get booked at Stars of the Century, it was, it was hard for me to get booked out there as well. I was just like reaching out to people. When I went to Stars of the Century, it was a kind of a slow night. I think I spent $20 on, on the box. You're breaking up. I'm breaking up? Yeah. Is this better? I just picked up my phone. Yeah. Okay. Your phone. Yeah, so I um, went out there. I was trying to get bookings at Stars of the Century. Out of 18 people, they put me second, and I made $15 in tips. Didn't make any money. Spent a lot of money out there. Did the photo shoot. Did four different looks. Came back um, after being worn out. Just like my energy just felt depleted. I actually physically got sick while I was out there. Um, had a loss. Like a family friend, I was like actually murdered. Like during that time. So it was just a very hard time, but came back to New York. I was like, okay, I'm ready to get these pictures out there. Asking Randall, hey. Did you, pictures back? Did, you, did you take pictures while you were in Atlanta? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, we had a full day photo shoot. Okay, so you took uh, photos with them while you were in Atlanta. And when you got back um, from Atlanta, what um, what transpired between then and um, and now that, that made them make the decision to um, let you go off your title? So January 30th um, is when I came back to New York City. The final night I was booked at the, well, not necessarily booked. There was no booking fee. I was just said that I was could perform at the Stars of the Century for tips. I thought it was a booking fee at first, but then my king was giving me a ride. He was like, no, they don't give you a booking fee unless you're on the cast. And I'm just like, oh, okay, that sucks. I worked at the Eagle where I received a booking fee and they even offered for me to come back because I performed and did very well. So I was just very shocked to know that I the stars of the century chicks weren't big enough. Not necessarily not big enough, but I, I just wasn't told I wasn't yeah. aware of that until the show was over. Okay. Um in the okay, my drag sister is on telling me to just be real about the tree the yeah. during the photo shoot. Literally, if I'm like rehearsing for my first national walk, which was Westland, rehearsing for that with my king and with Randall, and literally I'm changing my pads. Everybody knows I'm a boy queen. I don't identify as trans. They have not had a boy queen winner, I think, since 2016. Um, during the retreat, they were like roasting me, calling me dirty. Randall was like, oh, why are your legs here? Oh, you're dirty. I'm just like, I wear tights and I wear pads. Like, and then my king is side like sidebarring with him, like, oh yeah, that's so unprofessional. Why are your legs hairy? I'm like, I'm still, I'm still a man at the end of the day. <laughs> like, you're literally calling me dirty. But you're tight, like, covering up your 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 legs and yes. stuff like that. Exactly. Okay. So, I wear, I wear tights, when right? you were competing and um, when I met you and your legs was hairy then, right? Mm -mm. Yeah, my legs were hairy, but I had tights and pads on. Okay. Okay. So but, you saying the owner told you you looked nasty? He literally called Randall. Literally called me dirty, and then my king proceeded to say, "Oh yeah, that's so unprofessional. Why are your legs here? I'm just like, and I just shut up. I didn't say. I didn't say anything. I, I literally didn't say anything. Even when I went to do the Westland walk, like went mm -hmm. for the walk and was getting dressed. Like Syria was very nice. The uh, current rainy, the former um, Miss Black America was like, oh, so nice to meet you. Everybody was so nice. I did my makeup. I literally did did my face, like really paid attention. Anthony had painted my face for the photo shoot that went on during the retreat and literally did my face. Everybody's like, oh, you look gorgeous, blah, 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 blah. Trinity's went off. Oh, you didn't have your crown. The crown that they gave me, incredibly flimsy. It literally broke as soon as I like got it. Like when they crowned me the night of the pageant, went up to take pictures, walked towards the back, the crown fell off my head. Didn't even pin the crown properly into my head. So pieces like fell off via there. But Trinity, oh, little girl, like little girl in me, all of this, as if she just has this like, like just all this experience, which she does have experience in the scene, but like she's like little girl this, little girl that, like literally dogging me, like you're disrespectful. So you never felt welcome from the inception of you coming into this passion, right? No, 
No, and I, I really fought like to just be out there, like to sometimes I let the best get it. Like I, I love to I, I, I rely on being a people pleaser sometimes, but I'm getting out of that. But I never I never truly felt welcome, like no matter how hard I try, you have people saying, mm. Why did why did you apply? Or like you you weren't ready to rain. I said, I'm not ready to rain, but I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to grow. But I'm just being called dirty, disrespectful, rude, nasty, like Amateur, like not work, but I'm like at the end of the day, I won the pageant. So, did you I'm, ever express to them how that word makes you feel? I was gonna ask. Yes, yes, plenty of times, and it just seemed like everybody was like against me, and like you know, I would tell somebody something in confidence, like I would tell my king something in confidence, and I'll be like, oh, I, I just, I don't, I don't know, I'm really trying hard, and then he would go run and go tell Randall. He would literally go tell Randall, I'm just like, I told you that in confidence and you're my king. I'm supposed to be able to trust you. Um, even my mother talked to him. My mother, Tommy Ross, literally talked to him and was like, why would you, if your queen is coming to you and, and telling you something, why would you go run and tell the founder? And then Randall's coming to me like, oh, well, I heard you said this. I heard you said this. Or I heard you're begging for gigs at Stars of the Century. I said, no, I just simply asked, may I have a booking while I'm in town? Like, I'm, I'm not begging for gigs or anything of that nature. Common, if I'm in town, people, plenty, plenty of people do that. Yeah. yeah. Plenty of people do that. And even if you ask, well, so what the, What do you call begging? Is, uh, can, does it come because you said please or something like that? What does they consider begging? And, <laughs> if, and especially if you're new. And if they knew you were coming to town, they should have got you booking somewhere. Period. You're the queen. They said that they would do. And I had everything planned out to come back. I had left there. I felt a little sick. Like like I physically got sick to the point where like I was throwing up like like the night before. Like I literally had to um it was the final night. It was Monday night, the Westland night. And I was Stasha said that I could come do it again, but I was like, they're gonna put me second again. I said, you know, I'm gonna pack well, I'll always be up at the beginning. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna let you know that now. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris, Christopher Iman, I think is their name. He called me like, cause I, I did do a no call, no show. Cause I, I had a 7 a.m. flight. So I just packed my bag and said, I'm gonna protect my energy. And I did not go, but Christopher called me. He said, oh, I told Stasha to put you later in the set so you can get the full stars of the century experience. And I said, I'm not gonna be able to make it. My apologies. I just, a lot has transpired since I've been here. So tell me this: What happened? What 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 happened that made them take the title away? What was said to you? The reason why they um they took your title? Where'd you go? Where did you go? Okay. Where All I did you go? All I yes. So okay. me and Randall. So this was the at the point where I was trying to come out there for Miss Black America. Miss Black America. I had my flight booked hotel booked, new outfit, performance outfits. He's like, he's just like, I just don't want you as my queen. And I was like, well, Randall, I'm coming out there. You said that you would reimburse me for my flight at least. And I literally sent him like a screenshot of my flight confirmation. He's like, you think I'm stupid? You think I'm dumb? That's not your, that's not your flight ticket. Then I sent him another screenshot. Like, here's my name at the top. He still hasn't reimbursed me and hasn't responded to any of those messages. He just said he does not want me at, as his queen. And I got a call saying they released new pictures of Did Vanessa you think you wanted Vanessa anyway? Oh, yes. Absolutely. That's what I've been hearing. Like, when I, so who did I, they take these pictures with Vanessa? You say what? They took pictures with Vanessa? Yes. And I was asking Randall. I was like, hey, Randall, like, can I get some of the photos back from when I did the shoot? I did four different looks. Can I get, can I get some photos back? Mm, I gotta look through them. Um, I'm not sure. I looked at them. They're uh, they're mad. Your makeup is bad. I'm like, I listened to everything you said. I had someone Anthony painted my face, and you're still telling me the makeup is bad. I was there posing, and you were like, oh, you need to get with your king because your king is stiff. He doesn't know how to pose. And I'm like, okay, I'm killing it. I'm doing something. I'm doing something right. But now you're saying, oh, your facial expressions, your makeup is bad. We're gonna see if we can find some good pictures to be edited. I was like, okay, I have a someone who can edit the photos um, that LaToya, the uh, former opulence, re recommended for me. He's like, mm, no, they're going to have to do a lot of editing for your pictures, and that's going to cost mm -hmm. that. Well, they, 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 
they just told you that the reason why they don't want you as your queen no more because he didn't want you. You, you was relinquished from your title was because they didn't want you. Pretty much, pretty much. And that I just wasn't fit for the Renaissance brand. Despite when, and then I go on, I go on Facebook and the picture popped up with her. And how did that uh, make you feel in that moment when you first saw that? Uh, it hurt honestly, but I, I talked to my mother, Tommy Ross, and she gave me great advice. It, it really didn't hurt because I, I kind of felt that way. Like I did my interview out of drag and mm -hmm. like I talked to them, like I one interview, they're like, oh, why'd you choose to do it out of drag? I'm like, Were I like your it. legs shaved? Huh? Were your legs shaved when you want <laughs> interview? <laughs> no, See they weren't. I'm See what I'm saying? Well, I they don't were know. shaved, but they... they they were like, they were like, well, they said, well, why did you choose to do it out of drag? And I said, well, I like for you to see the transformation for when I hit the stage. And Natasha Braxton was like, you weren't lying. You are a storyteller and you do transform. But even sitting on the side, everybody was coming up to the girl, Vanessa, like, oh my God, you're so pretty. Like, oh my God, who are you? Like the next chastity or like, you're about to carry on that. And then I go and I switch it up. And I, I want everyone's like you be a beautiful trans girl. You you I literally feel really bad for you in this experience because I don't want that experience to taint Atlanta pageantry for you in Atlanta because Atlanta is really a grooming place where we love new faces, we love new people. That's a goddamn lie. It is. I do think pad no, no, it's not she not they, if they is they just got like that, they were passing their girls around from uh, a patch of the patch. You just no. had to get into the fuck you fit in. Atlanta off you. If you win the pageant, Atlanta been, they've been doing this type of shit to you. No, I'm saying if you win the pageant, you don't get treated like that. Ramda been that way, you know. Uh, but, no, Randa, I'm not talking about Ramda. I'm talking about Atlanta pageantry outside. Atlanta pageantry, they did what they want to do for a long time. The pretty girl always reigns supreme. Don't get it twisted. No. But, let me ask you this: the timeline from you being at that at that retreat where y'all took those photos and from them telling you that you was relinquished of your um, duties as the queen. How long was that? That was like a, a week, probably a, less than a week, probably a week. That was like literally, that was like five days before, that was like a five days or a week before I was supposed to fly out to NBA. I had everything booked and Randall said he was gonna reimburse me. He just hasn't responded to that text. And, and you it, it took pictures, and they have pictures with Vanessa. Mm -hmm. With the sash, with her own, with, with her own, my sash said 2023, and her sash said 2024, and her sash was brand new. Oh, wow. It wasn't borrowed from anybody. You I don't know if she the crown me. and money. Nope, they didn't ask me to do any of that. So that, so technically, I didn't think that I was dethroned. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think I was. Oh, yeah, that, I thought I was just relinquished of my my duties. Like I didn't, you. I didn't know until I thank saw you. this photo that they put someone in oh, my yeah. place. Oh, yeah. Because he said you can be a shelf, you can reign and not do anything, but you're still going to be the crown queen. It was until I saw this photo, someone called me and said, "Have you been on Facebook?" I said, "I have not," and I saw that photo. The when they took this picture, they took this picture. If I'm being honest, in my heart of hearts, how I feel, they they took this picture a minute ago when he first told me not to come out there for the retreat in January. This was already planned. This, this was already planned. How long have you been doing drag, Tina? Uh, five years and five pageantry years. for about two years, two and a half and, years. And when what you know with pageantry, do you think that you would have been able to reign at the level that he wanted you to reign at? As of right now, currently, uh, no. But I, I definitely, I definitely was making strides, and I definitely was making my way to well, be at that level. Um, the thing is, when you win the pageant, you don't have to reign at the at the level that the promoter wants you to. When you won the pageant, you won the pageant. And the promoter, y'all work together, you groom people together, but yeah, everything- dude, Randall don't see it that way. I'm not calling you a bitch, but I'm just saying, everybody's not gonna be on the same level. Mm -hmm. And you have to work and build up these people. That, and that's yeah. so because when I won Miss USA, Bay, I had I've been doing pageants for a minute now, but I was in, I won Miss USA, Bay, so that's so totally different than winning a plus page of being a plus girl. So that's like me being a newcomer into that type of realm, you know? So um, that was grooming for me there, you know? And that's what he's supposed to do. And, and, and that's what he does, you know? Mm -hmm. 
But Randa has always handpicked his people in a sense. He always put who he wanted to in those positions. And, and it, those girls it, had already had 10 national titles. So he just, I guess he wanted you to be them. I don't know. But, you know, let me tell you something. Rejection is a form of God's protection. So you may be sad about it. You may be thinking, well, damn, my first national title mm -hmm. and this happens. But this is maybe may the biggest blessing that's going to happen to you. But because to be under immense immense stress trying to do something that you love is unfair to you and the time and effort you put into a system trying to be a part of it that was never going to be fair for you that was never going to be set up for you so you know sometimes you dodge a bullet yeah you spent money that you probably say hey i could count it as a loss sometimes you got to take a loss in life right so this may be the best thing that ever happened to you because to go through what you went through in such a small amount of time I would have gave them their title back. They wouldn't have had to dethrone me. Yeah, because it's a bad feeling to go into a place knowing that people are against me and people are not setting me up to win. If that's the case, if if it's if it truly happened like you said, that's a horrible feeling to go somewhere and know these people are not for me. These yeah. people do not want to build me up. That's right. And you have to go where you celebrate. So I know you probably ain't talked to him since this happened. If you if you could say something to Randall, what would you say? In Honestly, court. I would say, I personally, when I spoke with Tommy, she was like, why are you crying? I was like, I just feel embarrassed. This is my first reign. And I, I later, very quickly, shortly after, I realized that I was crying tears of relief. Honestly, like there, there, there just felt like there was a weight lifted off of my shoulder. If I were to speak to Randall today, I would say thank you. Okay. Because now I know what it takes to run properly. And I've always been one to work hard and push myself to elevate, to grow as an artist, as a human being in general. Mm -hmm. So I would simply say thank you. And thank you. As, a, as, a, as a national title holder, I wouldn't be buying my ticket nowhere. If you you need to buy my ticket, if you don't want, if you're not buying my ticket, then you don't want me to be there. But Tina was making steps to to go up. I know, but I'm just above saying, and beyond and say I really want to be a part of this. I really want to ride this tickets? out. Uh-uh. But you remember he dethroned Natasha Brexton for wearing jeans at one time. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, then he crowned Maya. Maya took over, but now they walk together now for that year when they both come together. Stop asking me to come back if y'all don't take it from me. Uh -huh. I ain't coming. You took it from me. Stop asking me to come back. Tina, I'm, I'm just asking you this. Do, do you think there's anything that you could have do, done that would have changed their decision uh, to not um, not dethrone you? Or is there something you could have done? That's something you could have done differently? No. I honestly, I I don't think so. I just think I just wasn't welcomed from the start. Yeah. And it just, they mind like, was made up in the beginning. You say what? I'm sorry. You think their mind was made up in the beginning? Oh, yes. Yeah. And I don't think they were expecting me to, like, actually, like, win or to where they can just give the win to someone else. Mm -hmm. Some people were like, you, you, the win for you was, like, undeniable. So they, they and, 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 and the bigger picture is this. Then why even have a contest? Because, you know, and Chevelle, I totally understand your question about does she think she could have done something different? Yeah, she did what she was supposed to do. She won the pageant. Yeah, that's all it required all. was for her to have the highest score to win the pageant. So mm -hmm. there was nothing else for her to do in that moment. So then that means that if you want a specific person, then start vetting your applications before you even let people hit the stage before they even compete. Then that's true. If you're wanting a particular type of individual to reign for you, have them submit their applications a week before the pageant, you can vet whether I say, send some pictures in. I'm going to pick who I think is suitable to compete for this pageant and go from there. Don't take people's prize money if you have an idea of what you want. But then I get the highest number of points to win and I win. Mm -hmm. And now I'm not good enough for you. Talk that shit. Talk that doesn't shit. make any sense. And so, and, see, and, and the thing about it is say, OK, so, so let's just tell the truth is that this is why. And, and I'm not and, and I love our pageantry. But listen, this is why so many. There are some black entertainers that won't complete for our systems because yeah. they don't feel like they're good enough mm -hmm. or they don't fit a standard that 
those pageants are looking for so they won't put their foot or they won't just throw their hat in the ring because they don't feel like they're the right type of black girl. Yeah. yeah. Either either it's for all of us or it shouldn't be for none of us. Okay. Come on now. We, we've got to start doing better by our own. You want to be uh, respected by all of us. You right. want to be um, promoted by all of us. You want That's us right. all to elevate you because mm -hmm. it's for us then treat all of us the same the same the same we can't we cannot we keep talking about oh the white systems the black system the white systems treat us this way but y'all treat us this way too it's the worst with us if we're yeah, not the, the right worst. type of black girl that's right. not okay yeah. that I mean, is not okay i mean you spoke so a word also, you know, raining, so raining is a big financial toll on an individual like it really is it, it really is and like winning to me winning the pageant is the easy part but do, do you think that you're ready to reign as well now that i know what it takes i absolutely am ready to reign and that's why i say when i do come back to pageantry the girls will not be ready for tina 2.0 you but better I'm about to roll them down two points. I'm about to really shake some things up. So, but but in this day, what does that even mean? But, but even if you wasn't in, in, in this day and age, what does raining mean? Putting about out a bunch of pictures is that is that let's 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 find what that standard is. Go to the national wall. What does that even mean? Because Do we even because, know you what know, raining yeah. is these days. Well, There's well, so many descriptions of raining. So yeah. what are we what are we talking about? It's descriptive, but it's a lot of it is public opinion. And the and a lot of people, not you, but like cause this going to another segment with other people who's so into public opinion and what people think of themselves, you know, raining yeah. is about a lot about public opinion. Uh, uh, about what? Tina, thank you so much for coming on here okay. and Story and um, you know. let us know what really happened because we really didn't know what happened, and I'm sorry that really happened to you. And if if, if if what you say is true, and that's what he told you, you can take him to court because you don't have no reasons to not be the queen. Because if you sign the contract, that's not in your contract. No, yeah, girl, get the fuck. Oh, on. So yeah. you have to take him to court just like the others did. Yeah, <laughs> been in court a few times. Me not being the fit for your queen, that's not in the part of the contract of why you should dethrone me. Yeah. If I didn't take cute pictures to you, that's not in the contract to why I should be dethroned. But don't worry yourself with it, though. No, yeah. I'm not, don't worry yourself, but those, those yeah. are the things. And there's something great is, out there for you, though. This yeah. is the best thing that could have happened to you. Unfortunately, let me tell you about our pageants in Atlanta. Unfortunately, they, don't, they like to have the, their ideal of what a queen should be. People don't know how to work with what they got to build up what they got here. And that's the issue. They won't talk about that, but that's an issue. You can learn along your way. You don't have to, you ain't got no work to do as Miss Renner's done. You ain't got no prelim. Most you're gonna do is a national walk, drop a picture. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. about it. And so, then we'll talk about the passing again the following year. And, 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 and you dodged the bullet. You probably should have never done it in the first place. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. You definitely should be doing nothing when you're buying your own tickets now. I know, that's right. And you need to twirl him next time. Oh, me, buddy. <laughs> oh well, Josh, she took her out, Lord Jesus. All right. Hey, you. Hey, you was working fast over there, Jesus. Thank you, Tina. Uh, bye, child. <laughs> you know, I, Come on, that, that, right that, that kind of stuff boils my balls when we say we we gnashed them, but child, the queen or king should be paying for their own stuff in these instances. We can't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you no, know. If, if you say, if you want me to be somewhere, Trent, and I'm your representative, yeah. then you're going to provide those. Well, I'll aid, I'll aid in your journey. I don't think I would pay for the whole thing, but that's just me. But here, here go the thing. They got to take some of this pressure off these queens, especially... The National Walk has become a category, a competition. People are spending so much money on just a little moment on stage. This shit needs to be simplified. Just wear a National Walk. Everybody wear a black dress. Call it a fucking day. Anybody can find a nice little black dress and walk out the entire time. It's getting too fucking competitive. People are spending thousands of dollars to just go out and walk. They ain't doing this half. Um, so, they're not going to do that, Trent, because 
the national walks have replaced the preliminaries, and this is how people display. <laughs> their but they don't get paid for the national walk. They don't get paid. Well, some, so it can't replace a preliminary. The, some of them, the ideal of one. Well, for the for this new generation, that replaces it for them. I know that you know that because we. I came from a place where I remember when Black America had freedoms. I remember yeah. when the university. Some people pay them for. I found out some do pay for national. Wall. I think Wesley paid them for their national wall. Okay, but still, yeah, well, even if well, you get paid for national wall, it still well, does not equate to what you systems, think. Most systems pay their court to do the national walk. Hmm. But I'm just saying, you know, we come from an era. I can remember when the universe had 17, 18 prelims when mm -hmm. I first came around. But these people who just came around five, six years ago, they don't come from the era. So they this generation is like a national walk mm -hmm. generation. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's it's too much pressure on the people. And then we get people on here all day long. You looked at messages while well, you did this, you should have had this on, you should have that. This shit too motherfucking expensive. Bitches ain't making what they putting out. I don't give a fuck who you are. You're not making what you're putting out in this fucking drag. I appreciate the girls for, for getting all this shit made in the first place. It's it's too much fucking pressure. You know, the Simple only thing, black. like, even though, black. like in, her, in her story, I'm sure, you know, she's speaking her truth. Who? Tina Torla. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm sure if we talk to Scooby or Randall or Trinity, Trinity. Said, I'm sure they would have a different truth that they speak well, on. Trinity told her keep her fucking name. But, I don't know if you saw it pop up on the, the screen. The only thing is, you know, it's just a hurtful feeling, and I feel bad for individuals that feel like you're part of something that nobody wants to pour into you, mm -hmm. and you're like constantly being broken down because it's so many outside factors that are breaking people yeah. down that yeah. when you come to pageantry shows, all that kind of stuff. You want people to build you up. You want to talk about we celebrate this community. That's one thing. So when you feel like that community that's supposed to build you up, celebrate you and everything, it's tearing you down and you don't even feel supported with the group of people that you're supposed to be supported with. That's a hurtful feeling. But you know, the way everybody went at each other throats this past week, uh, we don't need to complain about nobody doing nothing to us or, or making us feel bad about ourselves or trying to say things against the gay, the gay people. The way we acted this past week, Everybody was into it. These bitches was even getting into it over toenails. It's funny to me how that happened to her on her first um, page. And it's, it's not supposed to be a quote-unquote black page, but it's owned by um, a black individual. Mm -hmm. And um, for her to compete at those pages where they are owned by a white man, and she gets finally win the black page that's on the, the page that's owned by the black man. And the black man takes because he says she's not the fit for him. Yeah. How that's supposed to make you feel as an African-American entertainer? A black entertainer. Now that makes me makes her probably not want to come back to Atlanta to run for Black America or Black Universe or anything there because they she she's tainted by that. By I'm not even gonna say what I want to call him, but yeah, you know. So what you want to call? Him? But you gotta say what you want to say because we gotta move to these other topics and we gotta get spicier and spicier. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, um. So as we all know, Bax will um, be making his do his lives, Baxter and the socials. Shout out to Baxter. Um, shout out to Baxter. When I suck you off tonight, I want you to do that. <laughs> That's him. He um he went live and he talked about Black America and um. And he ran down his um, his views on Black America and things that happened in Black America. He also touched base on um, the National Walk and the looks and everybody and things like that. And I guess he had made mention of um, Naomi, Miss um, Black Universe. And so she went on her live, which I missed, and um, said some things about how she felt about um, the text that's been on her. And also... Um, she made mention to um, things that with Tanisha and Tanisha's been in the business for this amount of time. And so she has this experience type of thing going on, allegedly from what I hear. And so um, then um, Tanisha Iman made a post, uh, made a live about what Naomi had discussed on her live and um, in defense to Tanisha. And so 
everybody like is in, have their panties in a bunch about what you know Baxter says on his lies, but yet and still they tune in and you know they tune in to watch and listen and things like that until it hits home for them and then they have then they have a problem you know um i've seen it happen you know this week when he was going live about a couple of things and one person even got on a, a under let's put the post up rachel made a post Rachel made a post and said, you all give back some back some big black ass, too much power. Who put him in charge of all homosexual programs and what makes his words have validity? I never seen him on stage in a pair of pumps sashaying any damn where. And um, so I seen somebody come up under the post and saying, you know, how he said something about them and they defended him. He defended himself and said what he had to say. And he got up a lot. But you went on the live and you were watching live and didn't probably didn't expect him to say anything about you. But then you also shared his live. Mm -hmm. So you're in support of it. You know, and then he talked about you earlier on and he was in, in defense of something that you talked about. And then you was for Baxter. Baxter this, Baxter this, that's my boy, blah, 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 baby this, baby, blah, 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 blah. But when he read you, it's a problem. Uh. And I'm not talking about Rachel on that note. I'm not talking about Rachel. I don't, I don't know if he even said anything to Rachel, but I think Rachel was coming to the defense of Naomi when um, when she made her post. But just because I'm your friend does not mean I'm going to always align with your thoughts. Does not mean we always going to agree. So it's very possible for me to the, all, all of us on the show we have agree on certain things and we have disagreed major on certain things mm -hmm. that does not mean that you're still not my person i'm still not gonna ride a doubt for you that just means on this particular issue i don't fucking agree with you all right so that's okay to me and what baxter does he gives his point of view and y'all listen to his point of view and me he said stuff about me and i came on this platform and said no bitch i you know, you can't call me out on your show. And I'm like, but that's me saying something to him. That don't mean I don't agree what he does. He does his thing. We're going to do our thing over here. And you, know, and that's his point of view. And I that's think his point of view. And that's his point of view. Y'all get, it's the other people that give him so much power and give him, even us, so much power over them that what we say becomes law. And Y'all need to check yourselves to me because y'all should be giving somebody that much power, y'all. It's an opinion. That's his opinion over how he felt. Secondly, and do you think it's because it hit home sometimes? Well, it does hit home sometimes because everybody want to have the amen comment. I, when we say, like, what he said about Naomi or this person, it's easy to be happy when everybody's praising you. When you're doing everything, when people are praising you, oh, I love the people, the people, the people, the people. Mm -hmm. When the people say something against you, then your, your delivery change, the tone change. He said how he felt about her and Tanisha. Under no circumstances do I feel that she should have even brought up Tanisha because <laughs> Tanisha didn't say nothing publicly about you. Even if Tanisha is saying something to her girlfriends, that's one thing. She's never said anything public about you. So you should have never like tried to one up her or whatever that case may be. Because he didn't she didn't say anything about you. So I felt that that was wrong for Naomi to do because now to the public it brings or oh, looks like discord within the system. And and that, and that, there you go with, with the people making something out of nothing when it's nothing really there, you know. Dominique, what, um, what you think about the situation? Okay, for, I guess the first thing I want to clarify is that what did he say about her exactly that she did not like? Because I watched, I watched a little bit of his life after um, um, MBA, and and I, that was actually the first time that I had ever watched any uh, one of his lives before. And, 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 you know, the part that I did see, I didn't see anything negative that he was saying. He was just giving his opinion off on people's 
packages and what he thought that they could have done differently, what they he felt that they needed to do for the next time. But um, as far as what he said about her, I did not see that part. But the thing about it is, is that, you know, what we have to remember is that y'all love this stuff. Yeah. Now y'all beg for this. Sometimes you're a part of it. Sometimes you do it. So, the, you know, and it goes back to the, you know, the old adage that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So if you can be a part of doing it, then be a part of the receiving end. And, and, and just because somebody said it doesn't mean that it's necessarily true. And it, and it doesn't mean that I don't like you. I, it doesn't mean that I hate you. It just means that on this particular thing, we don't see eye to eye. I oh, see people, something about we see people on here. We see people on here weekly who something in regards somebody. To I can say something this week, and a person be completely oh, and working on building her closet. Oh. Then the next week, I see that same person be like, oh, I agree with Neil. Mm -hmm. So it's not a personal attack on people. It's just like how I feel about this in the moment, and and when you do stuff publicly, you have to be prepared for the good and the bad, and when people do. The bad. First off, stop always I said all commenting a bunch on of it hypocrites. Because stop always commenting on it. I've because just now got I to... know I, I know what to push the button. That's part of the thing I tell you all the time. When Nicole and Portion was on the show, I knew what pushed their button. So guess what I did? I pushed that you, button. You pushed you push that I button. I pushed the button every single time because mm -hmm. you let me know this is gonna push your button. And, and that's I'm gonna get you upset. Because when Carrie Fairfield was going on, I used to allow myself to be so bothered because that was during my um, Miss America reign. I used to let myself just get upset about it and be laying in the bed, just my feelings all hurt about it. But then, you know, as I got older, I was just like, I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Because my rent is still going to be paid, regardless of what you said. I'm still going to do what I'm doing on my end, regardless of that. When I stopped caring about what these people had to say, whether in favor of me or against me or indifferent about me, child, go ahead and do what you do. It's entertainment. For those people that enjoy that type of entertainment, I just don't let it phase me. And, you know, you have to get to a place to where you are, uh, you have this strength within yourself that that stuff just doesn't bother you anymore. But I, mean, I, think I, I, think I think it hit home for them because deep down, you probably know that that was something you probably thought in your mind too, you know, and uh, some your, your friends might even say the same thing, but they're not going to say it to you, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why it hit home, and you want you out. Oh, you come so defensive about it, you know. Just try pay it, pay it. Because if you are in the spotlight, if you are a, a entertainer or or some type of socialite, you're going to be talked about. You're going to be talked about. You put yourself in that position to be talked about. But then, even if you do get talked about, at the end of the day, what does it fucking matter? Why does it matter? Because nothing's going to change in your life because you talked about me. Mm -hmm. You know, you know why it, it matters, just I mean, doesn't. You know why it matters to certain people? It's because people love to speak about how this doesn't validate me. But yet the first time somebody speaks negativity about you or all these negative things happen, now you're in your feelings because a portion just validates you and makes you feel like you are a certain an individual. So it validates certain people so they don't want people to feel a negative way about them. But if your life is happy because people are always saying positive things about you, then are you really living for real? Right. Because right. that's because that's not reality. That's yeah. never going to be reality. Never. So you're never going to always have the accolades of people. So you've got to shift out of that mindset that you're going to always be somebody's cup of tea. And and that that it means something also at the same time that you're big enough that they're even speaking on you at all. And and why can't people why can't people reign the way they want to? Like, what are these expectations we put on people who we don't really fund? We don't give them any money towards anything that they have going on. So 
when we get on live and tell people what they should have on and what they should have worn, how they could have do this better, how they can wear different hairstyles and stuff, like this shit is expensive. We just came out of a fucking pandemic. Out of the pandemic, now we in an inflation. Mm-hmm. We need to be lucky. I'm like Lauren Hill. Y'all need to be lucky we even make it to the stage. People need to just give people a fucking break. It ain't that fucking serious. What they doing ain't curing AIDS. It's, it's, it's not, it's not uh, saving lives. It's not doing any fucking thing. Allow people to reign in a moment. You know what I'm saying? What looks good to me may not look good to you. And, and some people be in places and stuff doing the absolute best that they possibly can. So, you know, then you tear them down. Then you don't fuck their whole day up. We always talk about, oh, mental health, mental health, mental health. But we got to be careful what we say, too, to even make people go to them headspace. This 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 past weekend, uh, someone did a pageant from Black America, and, and, and it wasn't successful. And a suicide note of, of, of a sort came up the next day. Hello. How they felt. You know, and people was running wild looking for this person and stuff. So, you know, a lot of times we got to be very cognizant of how we make people feel. You know, Naomi, to me, is doing a great job. I don't know what we want her to do. I don't know what ceiling we want her to fall out. And then I don't think she meant to attack T.I., but being attacked and making someone in your court feel like they better than you or airing it better than you, you can go into attack mode. You'd be like, oh, well, fuck that, you know, da, da, da. Naomi, don't do drag day in and day out. She's not on nobody's show cast. She won't have many clothes as as Tanisha Iman, who does this, who lives and breathes this. Tanisha should be at that level. She's been around a very long time, and she is the T.I. stamp. She's doing what she do best. Allow Naomi to do what she do best, because she can only fucking be her. But I I, I blame people for giving people so much power over what they should do and how they should do. You can't tell me what you think you ought to have for me if you're not coming to my life to add anything, like, financially, you know, uh, spiritually. You know, you can't speak into my soul. You can't uh, 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 put into my craft. What are you telling me to do something for why? But what I, I definitely agree with everything that you said, but I feel like anytime that you do things for the public, when people say it's not for the weak at heart, it's not for the it's weak not. at heart because it's easy to be having fun and smiling when everybody's praising you. So you it's, can handle when they're not well, praising everybody you. wants the awards and an applause. Yeah, but I'm saying it's not for the weak. So don't do it. And you gotta or you gotta understand that when the praises comes the negativity in the people in the naysayers it's sort of like this show we do right mm-hmm. yeah we got people that like me and don't like me on this show for all of us because mm-hmm. we share different views and stuff we don't everybody don't have to like us you know we got Perfect. people need to be okay with people just not liking what they're doing yeah. Well, that's the thing. A lot of people are just not happy with that. They are not happy with And that's why you got to make sure you're okay on the inside before. Mm, right. Because let me tell you and, something. If you don't learn to love yourself and you depending on the likes and love from everybody else to make yourself feel worthy, then you are really fucked up. Because if you can't walk in a room and feel great about yourself... Bitch, let me tell you something. I, I walk in rooms, especially like... When I know people don't like me, and my job is, bitch, I'll make you feel uncomfortable. I'm never going to feel uncomfortable in the room. I'm never going to feel that way. So I'm like, bitch, I know you don't like me, Trick. And guess what? I'm going to come right over there with you and your girlfriends. It's and I'm going to your like girlfriends, you. and I'm going to kick you. And make you feel uncomfortable. Make you feel and uncomfortable. Will, no, no, no. I will stay out your way. Because if you make it very clear you don't like me, then I do need to be out of your your way because every little thing I do may irritate you and then you may pop me for no reason. Oh no, I'm never gonna pop anybody because I got I got too much shit to lose. I can't do that. Well they don't mean they won't I'm pop not gonna make somebody I would never give somebody that control of me to make you feel like oh bitch I'm not gonna come over there on that side of the room because you over there. Oh no, you know no. Yo, I, if I'm in your space I'm aware and this, yeah. and, and this community is few by mess too. So when people be when oh, oh they did too much oh he did too much other the he had a live up with 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 Tatiana Braxton Baxter did. He talked. She talked about trans issues and different things. It probably stayed at a hundred, maybe under a hundred. Fail up, but very informative live. People don't tune in for that. But when it's the mess and they get to hear somebody being tore, torn down, then everybody tune in until it's them. Oh, it's it's great until it's you. It's, it's, it's them. So. 
So we just got to practice a little more kindness in this community. So what if a bitch should have wore this gown and should have wore that sportswear or should have did this? So what? All they could do is try it out that night to see what happened. You don't know till you know, until you do it, till you try it. You know what I'm saying? So what? These bitches don't win these pets. I would have had this attitude. That's what she should have did. What she should have did. She did what she prepared to do. Or yeah. he did what he prepared to do. And it may work and it may not work. What they might have let them do. Oh, oh, some, oh, the help that they got, let them do. Um, this past weekend, um, Sunday and Monday was glamorous uh, pageantry. And the deep one for the mister. And Geek. that's the divine one. So, congrats. Yes. I ain't got Trent, Trent is feeling himself tonight, baby. I didn't put a uh, picture of Sadiq and I don't know why I thought that he was I'm he looked very he, handsome. But he, he was wonderful. I talked to him the night of the page, and I'm so happy for oh, him. So happy for him. Um, he looked really, really good. So congratulations to Sadiq, and welcome to the Glam Squad. And on Sunday night, um, Sassy Divine won for um, the females. Come on, Sassy. Um, Diva Cliche from Jacksonville was first alternate, and okay. Range was second alternate from Pensacola, Florida. Mm -hmm. And um, they had a great night of pageantry over there at Glamorous and um, Mr. Glamorous. So it was nice over there. Congratulations to them. Um, Congratulations, you guys. Winners and stuff like that. They was doing the pageant on Sunday, baby. Them girls was coming up. Uh, Danger Iman. Uh, no, they're da not Danger Iman. Danger uh, Andrews. Baby, that little lady from here, she's something. She's something to reckon, be reckoned with. She's be, she was beautiful. Thank you, Savannah. I'm so uh, glad that Tasia Westbrook did her thing down there. I mean, Tasia had like Sadiq. Well, yeah, the deep. Tasia like, wasn't in the pageant. Until Tasia gets a we gonna call him Tasia because everybody tags the son. I, I know Tasia, but you know, I was the deep. The deep had. Did the contest, understood the assignment, and said, I'm checking off every category. I'm checking it off. I'm checking uh -huh. it off. I'm checking and it twice. Thing and kudos to the deep. I'm so happy for the deep. And I'm glad that this is a type of system that still allows the deep to be himself and still use Tasia as, as his alter ego to work because the, you get a lot of bookings and gigs as Tasia as well. So, congratulations to you, a $10,000 winner. Yeah. Yes, and cook some oxtail this week. I'm gonna come back. Okay, I love my Zadik. Um, congratulations to my um my sister Sophia Andrew. She looks beautiful and her give up, my universal show queen sister. And um the girls was competing. Shout out to Deranged. That that presentation that Derange made, she made that herself. And it, if you ever get to go on her page and just look at it. It's what was presentation? Which which one is which one is um Durang? in the left in the left hand corner with the um those are individual cupcakes and they on like each one of those cupcakes are on the shelf. Oh wow! Oh god! And oh, she Chabelle, like Chevelle. When I used to come to Orlando, did the range did you and the range stay in the same place? No, that was Trinity that stayed. Oh, Trinity uh, stayed there. Okay. Yeah, Tuck. And um, shout out to um Diva. Oh, she, and that's Missy. Missy turned for presentation. So them it a candy sweet type of thing. Yeah, it was uh, it was candy. It was sweets for the uh, opening. Put that back up, um, Coco. Um, shout out to Missy. Missy had turned for presentation. The girls really, they really came for the presentation. The category was really nice to see. I was watching the, um, the clips that I could find and the pictures and stuff that I could find online. And um, then the next day, we got a um we see a post that Nemo was selling glamorous, which was a shock to me, and I didn't know nothing about it. Um, and so he had made the post saying that um he was um selling the pageant, and so we have him here on the show tonight to um tell us why. Let's welcome in Nemo. Hi everybody. Hello. 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 Oh, I sound crazy, baby. Yes. <laughs> doing your thing <laughs> yeah, Trent. Welcome to our point of view for your first time, Nima. Shout out to you. How you doing? Uh, girl, I thought I was going to be on an hour ago. I took an edible right at 9.30. Oh, well, you're in a good space. I'm oh, in a good you're space. In a good space. <laughs> you, you, you right on time, Jim. Right on time, Jim. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry I couldn't be there this weekend for um, Glamorous. Um, I know y'all had a really great time. 
And um, congratulations to you on putting on a, um, such a great event. Everybody um, said that they had a good time. So you posted the next day that you were selling Glamours. Why, uh, what got you to that point that you wanted to um, sell Glamours after? What is it now? Um, what year is this? 15? Well, next year will be 15 years. Fourth, so this was the 14th year. Yes. So um, what made you decide that um, this would be like the year that you want to sell, sell the pageant? So I actually started deciding this a year ago. So as everybody knows, eight years ago in June will be Pulse Orlando's eight year anniversary of our tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, eight years ago, I dedicated my life to traveling around the world, speaking, raising money and bringing awareness to um, our communities. But what happened in the long run of it is I lost who I was. Because when you're traveling and helping others, sometimes you have to remember that you exist also. And in that process, I started writing a book uh, to educate kids about telling their truth and living in their own truth um, and teach themselves to do their own coming out story because we all have our own story we tell. And when somebody else tells your story, it is not a valid story you want to be able to tell your own truth and live by that truth for all of your life. So my program that I've been working on in the last year and a half has been where I can educate kids by telling their truth, living in their own truth, and knowing that besides their sexual orientation, race, religion, or gender, we're people. And we all deserve to be loved equally. And with this being said, my book is almost done. And I'm going on a different path in my life where I really want to start healing and educating our youth that's out there and adults that are out there. I've been doing uh, public speaking at schools and uh, universities and LGBTQ programs to educate our community and our allies. Um, I also have been working with um, my book ghostwriter um, to finalize my book so we can move forward. With that being said, I'm going to be you know, nonstop, you know, booking myself out and won't have time for the pageant. I didn't say that I was going to leave it completely 100%. I just can't be the administrative part of the pageant anymore because with all the duties that I'm going to be having with my traveling, I'm not going to have time to sit back and actually spend time with all the contestants because as everybody knows, Glamorous has a process. Mm -hmm. When you register in advance, we collect your registration in advance. It's non-refundable. Once you re register, then I start with a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you personally, me and you on the phone. I go through the whole entire booklet and explain each category of exactly what we need presented on that stage. Then after you're done talking to me, one month before the pageant, all of your music and videos are due. Once that is submitted, then production meets with you. They do a one-on-one -on -one call or they do a via email uh, information, uh, back and forth. Then we meet with you at registration and do another one-on-one. -on -one, and the day of the pageant, we do a rehearsal. So we make sure that everybody has everything they need to prepare for that day of. Then with all that being said, I just don't have time to sit down and really focus so much on what Glamorous needs. And I need to find somebody that can actually step in and be what I do. And I could, you know, necessarily I could be the face of it and still attend and still work with the glam squad, but that's up to the new owner. So you, um, you want basically them to take over everything as, as far as, instead of just getting somebody to like take the reins of the, the big part that you have to do, you want to just sell it completely and, and you're willing to just help them with it. Because, Absolutely. Like, um, I was telling um, someone today who's a part of our system that, you know, it's a lot that goes into um, the glamorous experience when you do um, become a, a contestant or even a former. It's, um, you know, with the production of what Blue and her team does as far as production and all that kind of stuff like that. The ladies that help in the dressing room, they're there to like stitch up your things and steam your things and all that kind of stuff like that when your dresser cannot do, but you only have one dresser. so. They can only do so much, and then you have other people backstage that are with, there to help us or help them because they help us too. And um, so, you know, 
it'll be a different thing if you have competed for Glamorous before and you come back and it's not the same because they have new owners and stuff like that. So it's a lot of stuff that you have done behind the scenes and, you know, to make it comfortable for you to compete at Glamorous, which makes it a different experience. I really hate that um, you're going to sell it, um, but I wish you the best of luck and um, in your adventures and things that um, you set forth for yourself in the future. Uh, you know, I love you to death and you have really um, got a platform for um, for us to 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 show our, showcase our talents over in um, Florida, and uh, I wish I was part of that ten thousand dollars. I only want a thousand. <laughs> but I really want to thank you. Went to Janet. <laughs> yeah. okay. Okay. I went to Janet. So and, whoever I'm sorry, whoever take over with the prize package have to stay the same, or is is up to their discretion. So here's the good thing about this trend: everybody can have a prize package like I have. Let me just educate our community a little bit about this. Everybody goes, well, how can you afford to give out $10,000 per pageant? It's very simple. All you gotta do is contact your nonprofit, local nonprofits in your uh, city and find out how they can donate towards your prize package. Our nonprofit is called Pineapple Healthcare. What they do is the state gives you funding for your nonprofit they can take that funding and they can actually spread it out evenly by doing outreach, setting up into nightclubs or taking that money and doing outings and trying to figure out how to spend it. So what they've decided to do is actually reach out to us and we work together with the nonprofit. They donate the $10,000 cash for the prize. We give that the night of, they get 9,000. When they step down, they get a thousand okay. and then we create a space where entertainers can actually receive proper prize money when they're winning the pageant. I don't have any obligations. After you do Glamorous, can I go do Continental? Can I do USA? Whatever your dream follows, I want to follow your dream with you. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why we're holding anybody back or making people do national walks or being a part of anything. That's your choice. If you want to represent me, like when Joan won, she represented us and said, I'm only doing Glamorous. So you can do whatever you want to do. It's your life. It's your career. I gave you your money up front. That's how Glamorous is set up. So we can showcase your solo talent all over the world. Oh, man. So my question for you, uh, Nima, is that, you know, of course, as a parent, you know, I, I really have, I'm passionate about children. And so what you're doing is really, really important, especially as it relates to um, children within the LGBTQIA community. So what uh, triggered you to realize that this was your mission and with everything that's going on within the uh, political process down there in Florida, have you gotten any resistance from any of the like Republican party as it relates to the work that you're trying to do? So the theater that we're actually in is the theater that's been attacked by DeSantis. Uh, unfortunately, the theater that we're in lost the battle with DeSantis and we cannot be but 18 and up for our shows. Um, that's the sad part. Uh, the other thing is with the kids, one day I got this email from this young boy in the Middle East. I'm from, everybody thinks that I'm Latin, I'm not Latin. I'm actually Persian. I'm, my parents and family are from Iran. Um, I received this beautiful photo of this young boy holding a rainbow in the middle of the desert. And he says, I love to, that's what he said to me. And what inspired me is that when I was a young boy, it was hard for me to tell my family who I was. At the age of 13, I was raped in a mall bathroom. Oh At the God. age of 18, I was addicted to drugs. At the age of 19, I lived in my car until the age of 21. I traveled around trying to figure out who I was when I overdosed at the age of 21. I realized that it was not what I wanted in my life that I needed to have change. Mm -hmm. And I did everything on my own. I built my own brand. I built my own business. And I want kids to know that regardless of what you're going through, you can have that change and you can be better than what that is. It's called strength. Mm -hmm. So with a big backbone of having just family and community behind you means kind of nothing. When you can do it on your own and you can show the world that you can achieve, guess what? It's a better reward that you could ever have for yourself. So my goal is to, you know, we started programs after Pulse happened and Chevelle knows this was called Hang of Heart. 
There was a little heart that was hung on my door the day after the tragedy. I, you know, my house became a safe house that day. Mm -hmm. Three little kids in my neighborhood put this heart that they made out of felt on my door and said, this heart is free and so is our love. That inspired me immediately to travel and want to do things better, to teach kids that regardless of everything that these polit politicians are trying to do to us, that we can be better, and we, but we have to be examples. And in our community, which is worse, is that when we are bullying each other and attacking each other through social media or through outlets, that's an example of what the community is talking about us. If we are people that are saying bad things about each other, especially after a pageant or a bad things about other people, why is that any different than what you think that they should really think about us? What we're not good people when we're doing stuff like that. It's time for us to start changing in this world and how it's gonna change is by educating the youth. That's the bottom right now. We're teaching them. How do you tie your shoe? I was taught with two hoops, wrap it around. Some people were taught with one, wrap that around. We were all taught differently. I mean, I'm going to do a funny analogy. I was learning how to run, a, a blow, do a blunt like this. Some people do a, a pipe. It all changes differently, right? Yeah. So we were taught that. It's time to teach right, not wrong. It's time to teach that we cannot be bullied anymore. We have to be on shoulders of the great people that have really sacrificed their lives around us to teach us that we all love. So... So with that being said, so, you know, and I totally under, I really appreciate everything that you were just talking about. And so sometimes they, you are an example of what they can look up to. And so, and something that they can model themselves to be, what could you say to the, uh, to us 20 year olds, 30 year olds, the 40 year olds, the 50 year olds, so that we can become a better example of the people that are coming up behind us. Because mm -hmm. as you said, we're seeing so much dissension about pageantry and who's screwing who and who's doing this. <laughs> what do you feel that the community needs to do to be better examples for these people that are following up behind us? Stop being negative on social media. Stop attacking each other in person. Stop making things about yourself. Stop allowing people to throw hate at you and you accept it. That's mm -hmm. the biggest thing that we do in our community. You know how many people have talked about me, they've called me names, they've called me racist, they've called me all these bad things, but, and it's okay, I accept that because it doesn't matter what your opinion is about me, it's how I present myself. And when you meet me in person, it's a whole different thing. So that's okay. For the last 25 years of my career, I have fought for the brown and black and uh, Latin and uh, you know, Asian American community. I've done every diversity event known to man. Every genre of music I have promoted. I have done the last seven years, eight years, excuse me, I have done hip hop and Latin events. People in our community take a certain genre of music and identify that as black. black. Hip hop is not black. Hip hop is for everybody. So when you're hearing certain things as people saying that Nima is racist because he only cares about the Latin community. No, I care about the community of having culture and letting the community hear that we have diversity is needed. It's not just about the white person. It's Nina, about what makes people them. say that you're racist? What made people even come up to that conclusion? Um, it's, you know, it's, it doesn't really matter, Trent. It doesn't really matter because regardless of what they say about me, I, I, I don't care. You don't know what, you don't know what spikes that? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I've made, I've made comments about you plenty of times about those type of comments. But it's okay, company, but you don't know me. I don't, okay. I don't know you at all. I, just, I, my, my I appreciate you and I love you. It's okay. Yeah. My comments stem from other people, but. That's the thing. That's what our community is stuck on. We're stuck on what hearsay is about. And we're not stuck on what the truth is. There's always three sides to a story, right? It, yeah, and sometimes perception can be one of those things that, like, if someone has a perception, you know, you know, it. it so let's just get clear. Are you a racist or no? No. I love everybody. I don't see. Well, he love everybody. So people can't ever run with that again. He's not a racist. Have there ever been moments that 
you've done something that could have seemed racist to someone? You know, comedy back in the day when I did comedy, such as I bring up Carmela Marcella Garcia a lot, okay. things that we as comedians back in the day, hosts back in the day would say is not acceptable today, obviously. Yeah. Did we I say anything, well, anything that we've said that has been a racial hilarious moment of what we've said in, in our standup? Yeah, it happened in the 90s and the early 2000s. But did we move that on with the, the times? No, because times have changed. We can make fun of our own stigmas and our own, um, you know, I was telling somebody else the other, actually today, I said, stop making the stereotypes true as a joke. It does, it, we always make stereotypes true, regardless of what we're doing. They say Persian people, oh, look, there's the camel jockey. There's the camel N word. There's, you know, that's what I get in my community. So, but regardless, we are people. Stop especially saying that we have to keep on bullying each other to get a point across. How about just saying, I love you? I mean, that, that sounds, well, we're here to talk about the selling the pageant, because. But Neil, it's okay. You can say what you want to say, and I appreciate that. Yeah. But what in the long run is, I don't hate you, and I don't hate anybody that talks bad about me. Well, you have no reason to hate me, though. I mean, I, no, we don't know each I, other. I don't, I don't hate anybody. I don't hate yeah. anybody. That's okay. Yeah. My perception of you was because of the Zayden's post and then what Chevelle said about you. I don't have, I've, I've never had a conversation with you. That was my perception based off of what Zayden said, who was an employee, and then what your friend Chevelle said about you. That was my only perception of it. So Dan didn't, what Zayden didn't tell y'all is that when did he come to come back and say how he asked to talk to Nima if he felt such, such a way about what Nima said and that Nima was a racist. So when people are problematic and you repeatedly are asked the same question over and over again and you tell, the, tell them as a manager that you're going to handle a situation yes. at 3.30 in the morning, when you're repeatedly saying, I will handle it, and when I said to them, get out of their way before, if they want to kill each other, you don't want to be involved in that. And I know Move. you don't really want to relive that entire scene. Yeah. Nima, I don't, thank I you don't so want to much. Anything, we really I'm want to talk as about- my point, As my the, point is, is that sometimes in your life, you have to push that negative stuff aside. And I don't care what Zayden says. Zayden was at Mr. Glamorous standing in my audience and paid to get in. There you go. Have a great day with that. Well, thank you, Nima, so much for coming on and telling us why uh, you want to sell the pageant and stuff like that. And I appreciate you. You are my friend. and um, You are my friend. And, and I appreciate you. And I thank you so much for um, your years of giving us um, Mr. Miss Glamorous and the years that you have given us Mr. Glamorous. I appreciate you and thank you so much. Thank you so but much. Let me <laughs> Special break. We'll be back and we're going to talk yeah, about yeah. America. Uh, I think the symbol is in here too. Is she? Definitely. All right, Nick. So you ready? Yeah, so, ready. so touch your toes. Now spell run three times. Are you in? Are you in? Are you? Hold up, man. What the <laughs> fuck are you got me saying? <laughs> are you in? I said, how you spell it? Spell run. Are you in? Are you in? Are you in? Y'all motherfuckers got some motherfucking shit for y'all. I ain't doing this motherfucking shit no more. Cause this fucked up. Y'all know I got a fucked up back. They gonna tell me to do some stupid ass shit. And I'm stupid enough to do this motherfucking shit. Fuck y'all motherfuckers. Well, I got my boy Legend in the building. You ready? Yeah, man. I'm ready. So, okay. First step, touch your toes. Yeah. Now spell run three times. Are you in? Are you in? Are you in? Man, damn, fuck, man. What the fuck you talking about, man? <laughs> That's some bullshit, man. <laughs> Are you in? Man? All right. My coop cheese hairy off of Kenny body. My coop cheese hairy off of Kenny body. My coop cheese hairy off of Kenny body. I don't get it. My coop cheese hairy off of Kenny body. <laughs> what am I saying? I think my, about it. My coop cheese hairy. My coochie's hairy, Alpha Kenny body. My coochie's hairy, Alpha Kenny body. <laughs> My coochie's hairy, Alpha Kenny body. My coochie's hairy, Alpha Kenny body. 
What is it? What am I saying? I know I'm saying something, but I can't think it out. My coo, my coo cheese fairy. <laughs> Do you get it? Wait a minute. My, my, my coo cheese fairy. <laughs> oh, but can That's a kenny body. <laughs> That was cute. <laughs> okay. It took a while. Okay. Yeah, my coochie's hair. I'm thinking about it. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Shout out to Mimi Marks. Mimi Marks is in the room. Hey, Mimi. Shout out to Mimi. <laughs> One of the baddest in the game. Sure. Um, Charles, so Black America had happened over. Um, what is it? About, it's been about two weeks now. Yes, a it week. is. Yeah, a week. Week. It's, it's been like five months how they clown. <laughs> Shout out to the uh the new symbols. Um the new symbols of Black America, Alphonse Dupree, Giselle Barbara Rayel, Dolce Styles, Jodor mm -hmm. Alexander, mm -hmm. and Valencia Santiago. Mm -hmm. um, those are the new symbols of the Black America system. Mm -hmm. You know, it, when I tell you, I was, I had been this happy in a long time with pageantry. Oh, you said because everybody from Florida. Well, not not only everybody from Florida, but people I really deal with, like when Giselle and Fonzie. Well, really, for the, for the boys, Quentin or Fonzie, I would have been equally happy with both of them because mm -hmm. I have a relationship with both of them. Hi, but, Carl. But with Giselle, for, for the girls, Giselle, for sure, because that's who I have a close relationship with. And um, Fonzie, it was just it was just a magical weekend. And then Valencia, the ice, Valencia was the ice on the cake for me because Valencia is the person who I, I always said, Valencia has the stuff, her stage praise will be together, but Valencia has the shit. She has the fashion, she, she has the personality. You know? Valencia did her thing. Shut yeah, up, I, I was happy for the three of them. Like, Shout out to Valencia. <laughs> Black America this year was an amazing, amazing contest to me. My experience was like, I just it loved it. It was top notch. Only, I, 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 told, right. I told um, I told Chris Higgins, uh, with my grandma, the only thing I don't like about Patrick, I don't like the Oz and Evans things. I be wanting. Everybody yeah, just, give it to me in one night. Give me all girl sports with all male yes. sports with. Give me yes. all talent. Give me everything the same night. The, 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 they give that bitch a leg up. Um, they they got to do stuff the next yeah, night. I don't right. Like that. She can go get some extra shit for your ass. Yeah, you know, she can buy the chain some shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, eh, I don't know if I like all that, but hey, listen. Let me tell you something, though. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Somebody got a date. That's Ed calling me, honey. She don't know that I'm doing my job. Oh, oh, uh, yes, I just think it, it kind of give a girl a uh, heads up, but child, the pageant was a, a good pageant. They said that the newcomers was really, really good, and mm -hmm. they um, they shined, uh, honey. They really competed. So shout out to those newcomers. What shout out to the newcomers. Juniors, yeah, juniors. The, the juniors. I'm sorry, the juniors, and um, they are both from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I got to work with them this weekend in New Orleans, and they looked nice for their uh, first showing as the juniors in um, in their own in their city, in their city. Oh, this thing. Who is that, Tamika X? Who is who? The second. She got a bucket of chicken over there. She about to devour. Baby, listen. Where she the leg, bitch? Honey, come on, Tamika. Tamika so, but uh, what I did find out over the weekend is that one of the rules for Black America Junior is they can't do any more newcomer pageants after they get a Black America Junior. That is the craziest thing to me. I don't, I don't get it. 
Um, now I could now they could say you can't go to say what do all newcomer. No, uh, you, say, uh, you can't say nothing. Well, you can you can say only the things within that range. Mm -hmm. After I give your pageant, you can't tell me what to do in my life. I asked what was the reasoning for that, and they said because they are grooming you to step up. Okay, but you still have Miss U.S. of a newcomer who actually has work. I just worked with, with the U.S. of a newcomer this past weekend. And she was, oh, all, she was all to another booking. Another you know, you know ain't no work over here. On so, this you know, that's constant work for Miss U.S. of a newcomer. She, she probably had more prelims than Miss U.S. of a. My God. So I understand how would you tell them they can't do another newcomer pageant? Well, I think they don't want them to. They feel like that once you reach that level of, of, of newcomer osity. And, and over there. Newcomer osity that you should now be stepping up to the big league. Now, some people really do have it now. But, you know, I think people oh. should step up when they want to. But some people really do have it. And it'd be time to go. Oh, no. Some people really do like when Vita and when 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 Vita and Zodiac won. Oh, definitely not. Okay. Zodiac. But some of these other individuals who like that was their first pageant they won or X Y Z. It's no. I just don't like the fact of you tell me what I can do. I don't like to be controlled in that type of manner, especially when I'm my contract with you was this year. Yeah, but they can't make you do it. Well, you, you, you don't even have to listen to that. But they just want you to. They can't make you not yeah. go. Because Jay Reed was a Black American newcomer. Then he went and did Wesley newcomer. They didn't stop him. Well, you can't stop somebody from doing something. But yeah, you can't stop people from doing what they want to. Maybe they want to do another newcomer patch for whatever reason. You know, everybody ain't ready to step up. Some people are. Because I just understand. Understand that I was like that. That don't make any sense to me now, you know. And and to be honest, I don't think being Black America Junior make them a crossover artist. You know what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. and and put them in, in places in other in other realms to to get like exposure. Yeah. But they think they be, you know, Atlanta's Atlanta is his own country. So I think they be just exactly. talking about here. So, you can stop them from doing it and, and that over there. You know what I'm saying? But like, no. Cause they're all past that like even no. But you got to be ready to step up though. Cause let me tell you something. If they would have ran up on 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 Alphonse Dupree this weekend, that weekend, they would have had a problem. The way the way that man handled that stage and the way he modeled and the way he just was like it was just like a nigga kiss my ass type of thing. But that could be a learning yeah. experience, though. It could you know? be a learning experience, but they want to win because when I because when I've competed against because uh, when I competed against America, mm -hmm. well, you know, my first national pageant because I know because I don't want to hear your fucking mouth about Miss America trend. But when I <laughs> but when I first when I did my first national pageant, it was. It motivated me, and I saw a level that I had not been exposed to before. So I learned things just being in the midst of those people, you competed and being, with the best and, you and being with. able to uh, have those conversations with them. Well, mm -hmm. well, how do you do that? How did you do this? Or mm -hmm. how did you think of this? So sometimes being just in, you know being alongside those people is a learning experience in itself. Mm -hmm. But it's different culturally too because you kind of came out around, around like the what the America girls and the US of A girls. It's different. Y'all didn't have a chance to go to newcomer. Exactly. We didn't have no national newcomers. Y'all were newcomers when y'all were. We had the So it's a big difference. Now this lane is heavily occupied here in Atlanta when it comes to newcomers. So I guess they really want them to say, hey, go ahead and step up because if you don't want Black America Junior. Anything they feel like anything else is less than or up under it in a sense. So why would you be constant? Why would you go backwards and not forward? 
Mm -hmm. I think there's just the encouragement for them to do so. I, I can I can understand trying to push them yeah. into saying, right, right, because go well, forth they're, and they get too comfortable. Yeah. right, they get too I, comfortable. I, I totally get that. Yeah, I get that. Um, I don't I don't really get that because I don't. When people say less than, that's like all those. You know, everything has its place. Whether we want to admit it or not, everything has its place. Well, everything does have its place, but you can't say less than and say let's bring the community together. Let's we all S Y Z. We all it's 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 like an oxymoron to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's but, just certain things just don't seem right to me when you say. And I understand what like you you let's say. I want my people to go this place because you've won this title. And once you won this title, it's time to elevate. But what if you win this title on your first time? Exactly. This, is your first, this is your first new compact. And, you and then they'll take it away time. the same way they did Tina Twella. They'll take it away. It's your first one. You don't get to have a first one over here. Don't go to Renaissance for your first one. And the thing is, too, with newcomers. If you're going to do your first one, don't go to Renaissance. Uh -oh. You're going to be from if you're a newcomer and I win something like Black America Jr. or whatever pageant, and it puts me on a platform that these people know me, and now you want me to move to something else, but I've only had one newcomer pageant. That's true. I've only had one pageant. Am I well, really ready to move enough. on? You think I'm ready to move on, but I don't really think I'm ready to move on. Yeah. One may be enough for anybody who can win junior. And but once upon a time there used to not be any, right? Well, it, well, so, so you so you so you had to figure it out. So mm -hmm. let's look at the people. Never mind. Look at the people. And, that and, but, then, but, but, but then also, but but here's the thing. Now, because with that being said, look at somebody like Alyssa, who was a newcomer, and went to U.S. of A. Her first time and won. Yeah. Oh. And she got hell too because she it took her a while to get used to being Miss USA. Her and Asia. Her and Asia. It took them a while. It groomed them. Absolutely. It groomed them. But you know. No, I'm not saying you can't do it. Right. They did it on their time. And that won't be everybody. I'm not doing thing. it on somebody else's time. That's the thing I'm talking about. It's not about if they feel they're ready. You got to be able to battle with bitches like Zell. Uh, Valencia, Alphonse, you gotta be ready to better in that type of level. Like, come on. Well, I don't know. Um, the, um, so Benny had posted that <laughs> after uh, after the pageant, you cash out refund, girls. Please don't worry about coming next year. We stopped with the cash out. Y'all know why. Oh my God. Now, I know y'all was not. Yes, they were. Trying to get y'all money back from the past. Now that is so late. And they said it was some of the contestants. What? Yeah. And see, that's the, that's the kind of stuff that I would want to know who would who would what the people yeah, because how much is I would call like out those people because bitch, are you that broke? Are you you can't support? Like those are some late. No, yeah, they're that broke. You know are you that broke that you gonna go to the event and then get home and um and um and then refund yourself. Refund. So, so, so next year, when it's cash only, don't be mad. Nobody. It's no cash only. Bring Come, no it's cash only. <laughs> cash <laughs> only. Bring your money every you single night. So, that, that was crazy. That was, I, I had heard a lot about it. I was like crazy. So then after that, um, you know, everybody was in all in the range, honey, uh, on Facebook and going in it and just oh, up, baby. And then so Gordon Fox had went live. Oh my god! Discuss, um, discuss Quentin, and um, I, I'm assuming that it was because of her name and is Najee, right? Around the scene, saying that she was yeah, Najee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since she was, since she was set up there, go ahead. And for you to run around the city saying that you are the king of bling, you're the king of bullshit. Let's call it what it is. He went too far. Don't fuck with our Quinn. Quinn don't do nothing to nobody. Let me, uh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. He hard from all I ever saw. Quentin, 
I be telling people, you know, I know a whole other side of Quentin. Quentin is tick, tick, boom. And he be really trying to hold it in for a lot of stuff. But Quentin is really tick, tick, boom. And he was real light with the situation. But I just felt like after Black America, it was just like fucking bombs going off for people who was like, why? I didn't understand why she was getting into it with each other, what was going on. I'm like, Gordon was speaking on behalf of of Najee. I'm like, let these grown ass people speak for themselves. Speak for themselves. Yeah, I'm like, what are we doing? Because allegedly he took a conversation that was had between Quinn, I guess Quentin and her. And um she must have sold him and so he came to her defense in a lie. And he even said had he been there, he would have put his hands on Quinn and would have been in jail. And I don't think he would. He said he mean, would he, he put his hands on Quentin, that would have been like hitting a lot of yeah, I'd be telling people Quentin is tick tick boom. But see, I always see Quentin as a really, really nice person. So when Quentin he went live, nice I was person. like, what the fuck is going on? Quentin went live. No, when 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 Gordon went live. Oh, oh I was gonna say. And then Gordon took it down. He took it down. Um so I be gangster. And I have a problem when you go live and you say, leave it up there. You said what you said. we can get a chance to see it. Not even that, but you said what you said, and you felt of you felt a moment to take to go on there and go live to say what you said. Leave it there. Leave it there. Own it. Stand, st stand on business. Stand up. Stand in it, as big as say. That's right. Well, I love when somebody stand up. And, 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 and go back live and say, I'm sorry. Or I'm still standing by what I said. You think when everybody loses, they just need somebody to blame. I think that happens too. Like they just want to blame everybody. Or whatever took place, or or like try to prove a point. I ain't fucked up about, it. or this what happened. This is the reason I lost. A lot of times, they just need to look into themselves. It ain't just one person that made you lose. You made to reevaluate the entire situation, the past, and whatever it is. You know, I think all that going back and forth, that shit had wore me crazy. I said, I don't even know what to say. I don't even want to say nothing. I just start praying. I don't know. I try to learn a new tongue. Hundred year old BBBO shot everything. Listen, Giselle did anoint the people at Black America. She put all that oil on the people. But I, I, think, I, I think she ended up putting the oil on the wrong people. She saved the people that was already saved to begin with. She <laughs> forgot the heathens and shit. My honey, right. I don't know, because, uh, Quinn had made a post right after that, and they go, go hey, Gordon. Gordon uh, here. Gordon, Gordon. Now, why you go live on that man, Gordon, and you didn't get all the facts straight? Now, why the fuck did you go live on Quinn? Well, I just, I just, well you never, know, Quinn is very beloved here in Atlanta, Georgia. Never, he is the king of balloons. But I, just don't, I just don't think it's appropriate to, if me <laughs> and Trent get into it with each other, and then Chevelle or Dominique interject themselves in our shit. It ain't got nothing to do with y'all. This is what y'all ought to be doing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Why are we why are we creating problems with people that shouldn't be a problem? Let those two adult individuals handle their shit. Because these are adults. At the end of the day, people are like, oh my child, that's what I need. Bitch, your child is 37 years old. And then the man was doing the goddamn pageant too. Don't go yeah. ask him to do your shit. And he gotta do his shit too. Yeah, that's that 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 that, 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 that right there. I'm I was doing the pageant. I wouldn't even call him. I'd be like, let me go another route. That Rodriguez said that wasn't her package. Her things wasn't completed the, the night of. Yeah, she never said anything or complained publicly. She paid but paid it because she's humble like that. Well, guess what? Guess what? I'm not trying to be <laughs> the I'm trying not to be negative, but let her explain her story. Because if she if she not explaining her story publicly. Then nobody else should to me. Yeah. If she ain't got a problem with it, I ain't got a problem with it. Stop letting the people get over on you. Period. Honey. And then Baxter went live and he said his thing. He caught he had called out the child. They talked about stuff that we had talked about.
the last season <laughs> with, <laughs> with designers and stuff, honey. I'm like, child, y'all. But who do we fault? You know these people are going to do this shit. You know they're going to do it. So why you hire them? So why you hire them? It ain't like you haven't heard. You, you know, know it's a possibility. Like, don't be trying to beat him up. Don't be trying. He do what he always said he's going to do. And, and y'all shouldn't be asking nobody that's in a pageant that has stuff to do for themselves. For themselves. To do anything for you. Well, no. that's the part that I really want to know. Me and Chevelle talk about this. As a, and, and as, a as a contestant, you shouldn't me, be accepting it. Me and Chevelle talk about this. I'm like, whatever Najee asked Quinn to do, did she ask him to do this as a favor, as okay. a daughter, or as, was she a paying customer? Because, you know, those type of approaches, that's three different ways I'm going to handle you. Because she is his daughter, right? She's yeah, Quinn's she's daughter. His daughter. She's so, crazy. if you my daughter, I might handle you like a last minute person, like if I got time to get to you. Now, if you're a paying client, that's one mm -hmm. thing. If you pay me full price, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. If you pay me a favor price, that's still a different thing. And Gordon, you better be lucky because and you still accepted to do it at whatever price yeah. that you accepted though. That's right. But well, the thing is too, Black America, what I, the one thing I know about Black America talk about it. is it's the same weekend every year. They are told y'all the weekend that it is in 2025. Yeah. So this pageant just didn't pop up on you. It didn't pop up on you. That you know when the pageant was. Mm -hmm. So the last minute preparation, I cannot get on with that. And Najee is a nice girl, lovely. Well, we but don't all know. this last she minute stuff, know. we know. had a whole year to prepare for the pageant. We don't want we don't know what was last minute. Valentino made a post, um, and he said, and it, it had in reference to do with how society makes us feel as competitors. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm really I'm really trying to make sense of what our community does. This is Valentino Lord Alexander, by the way. Shout out to Valentino Lord. I'm really trying to make sense of what our community does after every contest, turn triumph moments into tragedy and war. For us competitors, it's a damn if you do, a damn if you don't. We can no longer lose the contest, go home, regroup, refocus, shed a tear or two, call your intimate and authentic friends or team, and go back to the drawing board in hopes of capturing it next time around. Mm -hmm. We have to deal with being made to feel less than, and because we didn't accomplish what we set out to do, that hurts. Sometimes being dragged for for in groups and the information comes back to us that hurts we sometimes lose bonds that were close and genuine with fellow competitors competitors because of a competition mm -hmm. that hurts i get the notion of having tough skin but when does the human side kick in we all have emotions and we all feel like the winner that night i had to learn personally how to accept a loss and carry on with true joy in my heart it's not an easy thing to do, but I accept that some doors are not made for everyone to simply walk through. Pageantry is extremely costly, but no longer does it cost financially. It's costing in relationships, bonds, anxiety, and fears. The mm -hmm. pioneers of the art form created this space decades ago to give us an avenue to showcase our talents and skills because Lord, do we have some, but that is so diminished now. How could some that was created to give us an escape from places we weren't respected or accepted now has us escaping from it? Well, you wrote you, the shit out of that. That's, you, you that's like a motherfucking education. You read all that, and in my, my mouth was like, womp, 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 womp. It was so long. But it, that, that means you didn't pay attention to it, but it was so right. It was right. Well, I didn't say it was not it was, right or wrong. It was, I said it was long. It was, so, it was so right. Because when we do do pageants, and sometimes even when you win, and people like diminish your win, that makes you feel some type of way. Yeah, I've done that stupid shit before. But, you know, you know, I, I get so tired of these people in pageantry who yeah. want to talk about diminishing people wins, that's one thing. Y'all the same bitches who I see on award shows and Emmys and Grammys diminishing somebody else win for some shit. So when people talk about y'all, y'all take it so personal. 
because yeah, somebody didn't agree with your win. The same way a lot of people yeah, well, don't win and Beyonce, and Beyonce don't win, they get on social media and they read the, the person that won. No, not even, not even her when Fantasia was nominated for stuff with SYZ. Y'all diminish people's stuff all the time. So don't be, to me, it's just. Listen, it's just we, we to can me. never <laughs> escape scrutiny. It's going to happen on every level of life. It happens on every whether level. You're pageantry, like, whether you're at home with your family, hypocrite. whether it's you're a, at Y'all being hypocrites to me. Because y'all mm-hmm. do the same thing. When people albums come out, y'all say, oh, it's a fool. I don't like this. But like, it's going to be, bitch, even going back to Rachel coming about um, Baxter <laughs> and what she said, yeah, he might not have been on the stage or XYZ. But people comment on people concerts, people movies, and I ain't even, I ain't never saw none of y'all on the big screens or on concerts and shit. But y'all comment, so people gonna comment. And they gonna say, so you said they just need to get used to it. Get used to somebody you not have feeling, a thick skin, get a thicker you. skin. Is what you're saying? And everybody not gonna be on on your on your side. They're just not. Well, yeah. I do employ people to. And, 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 and you said it earlier. If that does not mean I don't like you. Right. No. Dominique, you want to say something? Because you yeah, really cause, 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 listen, yeah. Huh, huh, because once again, it goes back to Come my on. thought press. I don't give a damn. But how long did it take you not to give a damn? Because at one point you had to have it, give it, a damn it, it, to it, not it, no longer give a damn. We speaking to the people who give a damn. Yeah, but you know, here's the thing. You know, everybody's going to have their opinion, whether it's to the affirmative or to whether it's going to be negative. But okay. that does not mean that you have to accept it. Amen. And so, you know, you just have to get you know, and even and it is hard because you know, I think that people don't really understand the um the responsibility of what we do. Because, you know, they don't, because, you know, these celebrities, like what Neil was was, um, alluding to, like the big stars that are on big concerts and stuff like that, they understand that this is what it's going to be like. But I think that in in our community, we are under this facade of there's this rainbow and we all love each other and we come together every June, July, and August and we love each other and we're going to support each other and it's all beautiful and it's fabulous. That's what we expect, but that's not reality. And so what you have to do is you have to get to a place to where, Trent, you say it all the time, you've got to be so confident or you have to be more, so much more self-aware mm-hmm. that when those things happen, sure they hurt, but you're so confident in what you are and mm-hmm. what you bring to, to the table that it's just like, okay, you know, it, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Because there, because like I said, I said it earlier, there were times when I would see people talk dog shit about me on Carrie Fairfield and I would lay in bed all night long stressed out about it, crying about it, upset about it because these people didn't like me. But then but then I got to a place in my life to where I realized they didn't like me. They didn't think I should win. But d- did it take away the crown because they didn't think I should have won? Talk about it. That didn't change. Did it, did, it, did, it, did it affect me from going to work to, uh, the next day and I could pay my rent on time? I could pay my light bill on time. Did it change any of that? And once I that reality hit me, mm-hmm. I said, it, it, but it doesn't take away that it still doesn't hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But after my feelings are like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> Let, let me go back. Let me go in the uh, kitchen and go cook me a, a meal, and I'm and I'm all right. So you know, but, you know you, social media was different back then when it was just care Fairfield versus now. But and it didn't so, hurt more less though. You no, know, it didn't, but, I didn't say it didn't hurt more less, but it was like when you had like a couple of people pounding you. Now you have hundreds or hundreds of people pounding on you. So yeah. it could be different. I get it. But then I look at those people's posts and I look at their history and I'd be like, oh, they're stupid and ignorant anyway. Their, their opinion don't matter. 
You can turn your comments off. You know, you don't, and don't read the comments because people always got, I don't care how good you do it. They tell you, I'm saying this neighbor to say, don't read your comments. I don't care how good you do it. Yeah. Somebody going to have something. Some people just do it for me, for just to be a motherfucker with you. You know what I'm saying? I, I watch celebrities look at look at their comments and they skim across a thousand good compliments to go look at one bad one. And that's what they focus on for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. But you can't let people have that much power over your, over your life and what it is you got going. No one has it all the way together. So you learn it as you go. You go somewhere and it's fucked up or you do something fucked up. You learn from that. You don't just hide away and, and oh my God, they talking about me. Fuck these motherfuckers. We all got something to go through. You, you're yeah. supposed to learn from this shit. But right. I, I, I'm telling you, my, my thing I adopted in life, is I, try, I always tell myself, try to find the positive in it. I don't care how bad the situation is. Find the positive in it so that you can move on and let people be do what they're going to do on social media. Talk shit. Right. But some, but sometimes even in critiques, though, mm-hmm. um, sometimes you have, you do have to, on on the flip side, sometimes you do have to humble yourself and say, and take heed. is the, is there any validity to any of this stuff that these people are saying? Absolutely. Because yeah. some, because sometimes, as much as your feelings are hurt, sometimes there's some truth in there too. Yeah. That's- that's, and that's what I was going to say, like, does it affect you because you know that there's some truth in there? That's what I'm saying. That's why they let some of the stuff that Baxter say about what he says, because y'all know that there's some truth in there. And somebody actually said it out loud and said it to you. Your friends didn't tell you. He said it. It's, and sometimes it's the way that you say it. It's the way you say it. And it's on the platform that you use to say it, because some of this stuff can be told to people via inbox you know what i'm saying like hey you want and you like i've asked people hey do you want your critiques do you want to know what i think you can do better because now we're in such a sensitive like, climate and they get mad why do why he got something to say but why do you even care right that's gonna be like do you think i care what a baxter would say or tim or johnny or mary or us yeah, or we're Child. not friends. Okay. We don't talk to each other on a normal basis. We don't have each other's phone numbers. We don't hang out with each other. We don't do anything on first time. You are to me a quintessential fan. Yeah. So, bitch, <laughs> live on through me. Say the good, the bad, whatever you got to say. Live on. And you got to learn to take life. the good with the bad, though. Yeah. Everything, everything ain't good. Shit. It's not good, <laughs> but these girls. But you got to know. Once, once you decide to do a show, a pageant, mm-hmm. get on any public platform, you got to take the good with the bad. You got to. If you're a young boy starting out, they're gonna fuck you. If you're a young girl starting out, they're gonna read you till you get better. So you just got to listen. It come with the territory. Sure do. Um. So speaking of uh pageantry, hold on, let me make it tell. Her. Hey, Tyra feels. Hey, Tyra. Shout out to Tyra in the hills. Tyra, um, I think, was this Tyra? Yeah, oh, the first time I went to uh, Verdemore, Tyra, it was there. So, Tyra, I went to Verdemore while I was there uh, in New Orleans. If you ever in New Orleans, please stop by um, Verdemore. It's, a, I think, a 24-hour. They they change shifts between 11 and 12 or something like that at midnight, but they serve everything under the sun. And you can get stuff cold, so you can pack it up and take it back to wherever you come from. And so that's what I love to do. So um, I love the Verdemore. It's in the quarters. It's at the end of the quarters. Um, Miss Gay America film was um, setting. They posted that they was um, that you had to submit an application on Saturday. I forgot what day it was. It was uh, March sixteenth, I think. Um, between 12 p.m. and 12 a.m., and they were taking 16 contestants, um, 16 applications, and I'm not sure if it was the first 16 that they were taking, but you had to submit those applications between those hours of uh, 12 p.m. and 12 a.m. Um, on September 16, 17. And I was chosen as one of the contestants to compete for Miss Gay America Film. And along with- Along with um, fifteen other uh, contestants that um, were listed here, and these were the ladies that were chosen to uh, compete 
we will be competing in Little Rock, Arkansas in January, the week of Miss Gay America. Miss Gay America will be, um, I think, um, Monday through a Friday, Tuesday through Friday. And then we're that Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, nice. And that congratulations to um, our um, co-host here on the show, Dominique Sanchez, who now serves as a board member of the Miss Gay Amer on the Miss Gay America board. So congratulations <laughs> to Monique. Go take that. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and it was more mm -hmm. contestants. So, you know, we vetted the applications. We read through um, what everyone submitted. And we we chose based on who embodied what we were what we're looking for to be the first Miss Gay um, America film. So you it wasn't just the first 16. There was more. So you were you were chosen because we felt that you all were qualified and you embodied what we're looking for to be the next representative. So I'm glad you said that because, you know, I saw Dina Cass make a post about why was she chosen. I'm like, it's very simple. We don't want you. They didn't want that you. Is, but no, 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 no. Please, let, no, 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 Neil. No, I, I normally let you have your devil advocate moment, but you're not gonna have this one. No, 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 no. no, no. We, Dina Cash, sorry, baby. We got, Dina we Cash, got, you did not make the cast. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Dina not on the cast. Because, you know, because we, because she, she's Dina a great, the we, cast. We, we, we have it. She is a great entertainer. And that was not the case. And she got but we, we got, we got notifications as the, as the applications were coming in. And we did not get an application from her. Oh, uh, well, Nina. So, Dina. so. Oh, she just thought that she was that girl. And y'all was going to call her anyway. We did We did not get an application from her. So, but however, if that even is what she was even talking about, you know, but people adjust us, which of course, that's what I thought she was talking about. I thought she was talking about as well as other people were thinking that's what she was talking about. But we did not get an application from her. So, uh, Dina, you did all that and didn't get an application. Mm -hmm. Dina, because you know, as a board member, of course, you know I'm ride or die MGA. So I was going to say something anyway. But as a board member, you know, I just don't like when, especially with this person, um, the Timothy guy, you know when you start calling people's integrity into question, it turns into something else. And Rob, I, you know, Rob and Michael are wonderful businessmen. Um, they have never done anything that made me question their integrity and their um, ability to be fair. And so that's why I had to get involved because, you know, this is why people don't trust pageantry or why systems that are really about business get a bad rap because you know you have people that are doing things like this so mm -hmm. so no i was not about to sit back and just allow that to be something that people were going to just take and run with it we had no application for her had she submitted an application she probably would have been one of the people chosen who knows because there were many of us that were choosing the selection. I was just one vote out of all of the people that were chosen, but we picked people based on their desire mm -hmm. to be the next, to be the first. And it was limited Ms. to 15. Uh, Ms. Okay, so can, can y'all explain to us what qualifies somebody to be gay America film? Is that uh, <laughs> This pet, this one pet, what, what qualifies might be? It? You got to drive a stick shift. Well, well, you know, so so let me just explain to this way. You know, it's kind of like when you submit um, like an essay and you mm -hmm. state why you feel like you should be the next one. What do you understand about the system? And what do you think that you can do to move the system forward? And so those were the things that we were looking for. So what People qualifies that have, the person, though? 
Okay, so so let so let me talk about what we are going to be expecting from the person that's going to be the next Miss Gay America film. It, she's going to mirror what we expect out of Miss Gay America. Miss Gay America title holders are, in my opinion, the true definition of representative because they have to travel the country and represent the system and uphold the standards of the system on her own. The owners aren't doing it for you. She's the one that's traveling from preliminary to preliminary, making sure that the rules are being adhered to. She's overseeing the judges. She's looking at all of the score sheets. She's making sure that all of the judges are scoring within the guidelines of the, of the competition. If she notices a discrepancy in the scores, she has the power to pull that judge aside and say, hey, listen, your scores are completely out of out of range. Can you explain to me why no. you scored this way? So, so not that part, but what's like the minimum qualifications for somebody to compete for the pageant? They have to be like, what's the qualification? Trans, they have to be of trans experience or, or a female. A born female. Trans experience or a cisgender woman. A cisgender woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which we call them AFAB because, you know, assigned female at birth. That They call themselves AFAB queens. A fabulous queen. Yeah, a fab. Yeah, and so, and so, you know, I, I'm, I mean, you know, people were saying, oh, you know, it's about time. They should have been done this. Things happen when they're meant to happen. And then there were a lot of people that were criticizing them, saying, well, why won't you just let them compete with the other contestants that compete for Miss Gay America? But if I have something that's successful. Something yeah. that there's definitely that. something yeah. that there's there's a market for. Don't Why am I going to change it just because of public opinion? Yes, there are people that support Miss Gay America for that very reason because well, it is the only system that is a safe space for men that use prosthetics and makeup and hair and wigs and stuff. And they do the complete and transition. I, I completely understand that. I, I would never want Gay America to change their platform because that is like a safe space and the only space that I know that those individuals can run for. Correct. So, so get good luck, Chevelle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited about, uh, about doing the page. Let me know if you want me to come out and do a you I you'll be in, you'll talent. you'll be you you'll be in Little Rock in uh January, so get your ticket. No, that's that's like like is that like doing MRK weekend? No. no. Get oh. your ticket and bring your ass. That's that's all you need to know. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know if there's any six quarters going on, you won't be there, but okay. No, no, don't go in Child, I will be competing in um, Miss Gay America Feminine. I'm so excited to um, to be one of the contestants. So see y'all in January. Get your tickets. Get your tickets. Get your tickets. So um, you can't judge what you don't see was the post that Giselle had made. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, 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 no, well, it's just I, us. I'm, I'm coming right back. I need to get you dressed real quick. Uh, oh, okay. Um, drain, your dick, drain your dick and get back. <laughs> you can't judge what you don't see with the post. Is that true? This that if you don't see something that is part of a subcategory, how you probably judge it? Do you deduct points or make an assumption? So Giselle had posted, you can't judge what you don't see. And then um Athena had made her her comment. She said, Well, I said this is a question that myself and many other contestants as well were asking about your sportswear. Not due to the fact that clearly you looked absolutely freaking incredible, but that but so that others how know how to conduct themselves going forward. As I said when I saw you backstage, my God, I meant that however, when we were told we are just off subcategories and two of the subcategories you can't see at all, how do you score it? Do you get a zero, a purpose perfect or half the subcategory because if the answer is perfect i'm going bald head every category to ensure i get my points we know dang well there are people who judge and will count 
count off just like there are those who think stones don't go on sportswear. I can only speak for myself when saying when X and I said my thoughts, it wasn't in a malice, but in clarification to make sure we as competitors govern ourselves appropriately in the future when doing sportswear to make sure that we receive all the points we can. And they did um, post that, you know, the the difference in what they were expecting at Black America this year and what they can um, bring. Thank you, Lord. Because um, at first, you know, that was usually, you know, the 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 suit with the gloves, hat, and uh, purse. You had to have all those things. Mm -hmm. But now they um, they went into like high fashion and and this that, and the other, and so you can do all these different things. But um, when you are, in my opinion, when you are based on subcategories and being that I judge. And Miss America, and those subcategories too, because I hate judging pages. First of all, let let let, let me make that clear. So I've never, um, I ain't gonna say I never have. I have judged pages where there were subcategories before, but I've never judged someone where they didn't have what they was asking in those subcategories. Mm, okay. And so when um, you don't have what they're asking in those subcategories, there will be a question arise to what am I supposed to give this? I don't see it. So me in my mind thinking, if I don't see it, I can't judge it. It's not there. So I can't give you something for that's not there. Mm. I can't give you a perfect score if it's not so there. What, so I, what would you have given if I, one through five was Harry Maker? If the little, if I can't give it a zero, I'm going to give it a one. Mm. Because it's not there. I can't see it. I can't give it a perfect score because ain't no perfect head to judge, ain't no perfect makeup to judge. That's my opinion. That's why it's seven of us down there. That's right. And ju and judging is based off your opinion and what you want to give it in your score. So that's what I would give it. Yeah. Because you can't judge what's not there. That's like you being a makeup artist and somebody wearing a mask and say, "Do my makeup." But you go put it on. Mm -mm. I don't know. For me, I'm not taking this mask off. For me, her look didn't require hair and makeup. It could have though, but it didn't. It could. Have. It could she could have cut the eyes out and wore lashes and a red lip and a kiss curl. That's hair and makeup. Yeah, I get that too. It would have fit the look because those looks have been that look that she did. Those looks have done been done before. But go ahead. But that look was so effective. I I missed the whole first night of. Of, of Black America, so I didn't I didn't understand what the girls had did the night before I heard about it, and because I was working, but I was seeing everybody outside. You had people thinking Giselle would win. You had people thinking that um, Athena Athena would win, and then you had people thought that Monica would win, and um, and I was like, okay. So I saw the competition. I saw Giselle came out in sportswear. It was such an electrifying moment. That I said, I don't care what else she did. I think she might, I think sportswear may have made this girl win the pageant. Mm -hmm. Like, if I was judging her sitting down judging, I understand the fact that you can't judge what you don't see. I think that because her look did not require that, I would take, like, if all points added together was 25, I would then put all those points together instead of having the subcategory up. It's just me. And I would be like, let me judge what I see. Is this going like this? Is this going like this? Is going like this? There's no hair and makeup, but the look is still effective. And it and this look took the building up. It was it was cutting edge. It was taking a chance. They don't do that at Black America. Black America is more the lady, the hat, the purse, like you said, the stockings and stuff like that. Not so, effective, but it was like innovative. It, it was so like innovative. And to me, effective. this was the best sports I've ever seen. Me. This but, was the best sports I ever seen. So since you said, let me judge, let me judge how whatever. But if there is subcategories, how do I, you? I, but listen, for me judging, I don't even need subcategories to take off a hair and makeup. I don't need somebody. But that hair one through five. If I don't like the hair and makeup, I'm gonna take off for it. But you got to realize, as judges, we got to realize we followed them the whole entire weekend. And I know somebody may say, well, that's not the category. That's not the category. I had just saw her in gown and saw that her makeup was absolutely flawless and her hair was beautiful. And I know that ain't that category, but I knew that if she did need to show hair and makeup, that 
That's the same girl from all night. This is the same girl I saw in interview. This is the same girl I saw in presentation. I know from then that her makeup was beautiful. I know that then that she know what beautiful hair looked like. But this sports where it ain't about hair. It ain't about makeup. It broke up a moment. It was a fucking moment. I but, said, I think, but I think that what needs to happen, you know, especially since, you know, she took it since, and I'm sure she's going to work on this because, you know, she's that type of person change then if there's if there is no makeup then you know you have to adjust the description of the category that yeah. if if that's not what they're showing then how is the effectiveness of this other part well, so like, like 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 for instance like um you know with miss america they have set design is a subcategory but if you don't have a set you can't judge if that somebody doesn't have a set. So showmanship is what you're judging in place of the yeah. set design. So yeah. what they need to do is just do an adjustment of the subcategory and say that if you cannot see, you know, if the person isn't wearing a wig or if the person isn't showing their whole face, then this is what you're going to judge in. So, you know, so there's ways to, to, to adjust it and you can, mm. you can fix it. Um, so then that way, these conversations are not being had when the contest is over. So, no, but that's, that's why we also, what I'm going to a whole nother, um, category or topic mm -hmm. that we talk about mm -hmm. as fashion evolves, as trends evolve, the scorches need to evolve as well, because what they Giselle did was, what Giselle did was. She evolved the category. So mm -hmm. do we need to also go back to these pages that have these score sheets that was did 10 years ago or 15 years ago, even five years ago? We didn't evolve these score sheets because as fashion changes, so should the category description changes. Yes. And people need to also realize when you do subcategories, that narrows the scope of what you can, what contestants feel like they can do. And it really bosses your contestants in to me, as opposed to letting your contestants really elevate and do what they want to do. Yeah. And you don't necessarily have to change the score sheet, but you just amend them to accommodate something different. I think so if some so if somebody wears a mask and you can't mm -hmm. see like Giselle did, there should be something allotted to where she still gets the points. Within yeah. that subcategory, and I think they but it's, but it's, but it's, but it's not, but yeah, yes, you know, but, but but here's the thing you can't automatically, but, but, here, but here's the thing the judges may understand that, but other contestants may exactly. not, and so which which is what brought the question mm -hmm. was she a brilliant and was she amazing and was she fabulous? Absolutely, mm -hmm. but then but then but here's the thing. The contestants aren't going to think about that because because she was so absolutely fabulous. Oh, we got some, you know, we got some complaints because uh, how did you judge her on her makeup? Because you couldn't see it. So what you do is you amend the score sheet mm -hmm. to where you say, OK, yeah, she because she, the person because I don't want to make it about Giselle, but because the person did something different, yeah. this is what they judged on mm -hmm. as opposed to somebody that showed their face and we're judging you on your makeup. Yeah. We're because, judging well, you based that, on that, the that other just, aesthetic that, that you brought to the table. We Hold on, wait, they changed the description of sportswear, but they did not change the score, not expecting something like that to happen. But right. let's look at this too. None so of us have never seen a off. Black America score sheet. No, but we know that some categories. If 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 hear that there's one, the contestant said there's some categories. They ain't saw it. So and tell them there's some categories. When we talk about hair and makeup, though, when we talk about hair and makeup, and we talk about Giselle, Monica, and Athea. Athena. 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 I seen a tomato, 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 tomato. And your tips. <laughs> handle handle your liquor. Handle your liquor, Neil. Handle your liquor. It's just, it's just, it's all the same thing. But, but we always Giselle, say we see. Giselle, 
We all was- hair and makeup all weekend was immaculate. Going to Trent's comment earlier because we had already saw her in these categories. When we talk about hair and makeup for other people, y'all wasn't there, but in the audience, people was already saying, and people was already saying like, Monica's hair or makeup was this way. Athena's hair or makeup was this way. So I'm not discrediting them, but Giselle did her thing, and I think she. But just, you just said it's I wear yeah. hair and makeup, and when I was discussing it with you earlier. Well, I, I'm saying they can't, when they can't, when they can't tell a person down, the first thing they say, well, you know, her hair and makeup was this and that and the third. Well, it was her hair and her makeup. It was her hair and her makeup. Even when I talked to Stasha and she was saying at Black Universe, when you do a solo talent, the highest score you can get is a seven. You can't get the 10. So this and I'm like, you can't get a 10? No, you can't get a 10 because you're doing a solo talent. So you got to have somebody at least walk across the stage yeah. in your talent in order for you to get the 10. Yeah. So there should be some type of something to like support her. Well, that- first off, and also y'all under the assumption that well, not y'all, but people are under the assumption that just because Giselle won the category means that she won with a perfect score. She no, probably no, no, did no, not no, win no. with a perfect score. She did, but, she but, probably, but that's the, they no. probably did take off her hair and makeup. No, I mean, that's I mean, they did her hair and makeup first. But I don't think that that's necessarily what we're talking about. It's just that when you have people that are forward thinking like Giselle then you need to put the systems into place to protect those people that do that. And you say, if 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 you're not showing the makeup, but she did this. Because there's no and this is, and this is, and this is, and this is to, what if, made her fabulous. And this is what made her. If you are a gambler and you take a big risk, you're going you're gonna to take a big reward or a big deficit. And she took a big risk and she got a big reward from it. You got a big reward. Look, and it's like look, Nicole always say. Nicole always say, people don't know what they like until you show them. And right. people didn't know they was going to like that until she showed us. It was absolutely amazing. Because it was I, I Shout out to Monica. Well. Too. Monica had her clothes I thought, on. I, I thought Athena was lovely. I thought a lot of people in the pageant, fabric choices was like really cheap to me. It wasn't good. Wait a minute. You've been so far. But I'm thinking, but I'm quite positive that because of this, Giselle is going to make sure that 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 that's adjusted to protect people that do these types of things that think outside of the box, because what you want to eliminate is people having these types of arguments. Because now, please, well, please well, don't. The thing is, y'all should have been. People should have already known. Black America is trying to go in a trendy way. Even I'm going back to when. Larry won when Darion won. Darion and Sportswear had on sandals in Sportswear and slayed those people. And people had an uproar exactly. about it. But the thing is, you have to be a trendsetter in black pageantry and just in pageantry in general. Be a trendsetter. If you keep going in the norm, you're going to take a big hit or a big gain. And it's a risk, but you got to go with it. You don't know which way it's going to turn, and you got to just go with it. Yeah. Right, but but you adjust your scoring and your well, score know what the score look like, and your score sheet. Yeah, so so then you you adjust that to. Yeah. Um, no, I get that. Yeah, I get that. I get that, I get that but I I love. Yeah. It. Okay. You don't know till you cross those what, the, about, those situations. What about expecting Because what, because what I loved about what she did, she acted the part out. Because not only did she do this fabulous sportswear, you see how she, she, walked out? Pre- she presented it. Oh my God. To where it was just like, listen. Oh shit. I've seen some sportswear women. Is- oh, um, okay. um, Tatiana Braxton Green, Christian Dior sportswear back in the day. You know, or sportswear. Uh, or even Marissa's. Um, Marissa's. Even her sh- white Chanel she wore that time. No, the, they uh, broke. They broke. The newspaper with the hat and the umbrella. That that. Oh, uh, this is, is not real. Now that a lot of pageants don't have preliminaries, is it more important for them to keep their websites updated and have prov- have 
and provide information and category descriptions for the contestants to view at all times. Should the categories and rules be discussed at orientation? I definitely agree. And just like uh, when Nima was on here earlier, how he said how he goes through the um, the process with the contestants and stuff like that. Um, I even, when they um, put up the rules and regulations for for um, Miss Gay America Film, as well as when I was doing Queen, it was 27 pages. I, I read them. You know, you have to go through and read them. And sometimes, um, and I do think that at registration or rehearsal that the, um, it needs to be discussed or some type of way that, you know, before you, well, after at registration don't need to be discussed, but before they need to have be some type of orientation to whether to make sure that the contestants do go over everything in the handbook. I agree. Uh, what do you think, Trent? <laughs> What you asked me? I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh my baby daddy is not. He he been smoking all evening. All evening. <laughs> so I, 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 I it depends on the type of system that you're going for and mm -hmm. the type of system that you're doing. Uh, I don't know. I th I think that any adjustments. I think. Well, first of all, I think that with any pageant, your your website should be updated. Uh huh. Your your website should be updated. No, you ain't got nothing going on throughout the year. And well, well, no, no, no. Yes, no, yes. Of course, yes, baby, daddy, it does. It does. Because okay. yes, it does. Well, tell I'm, me tell why. You, I'm gonna tell you why. Because if you don't have preliminaries, how mm -hmm. else are the contestants supposed to know what is expected or what is allowed? They need to start calling these family reunion pages. You come get it that year, and you come back and give it up at the same time the next year. It's just a family reunion. We all meet up and have a good time yeah. and go home, see who won. These yeah. prelims, a lot of times, especially these black communities, they have sales. Ain't no more fucking prelims coming this way because people ain't going to do no goddamn prelims to go to the same pageant that they ain't had to have no prelim to for 20 goddamn years. They're just not doing it. Find I your miss work. You got to get creative now. Sit down with your pageant owner. Call around the different clubs, different opportunities. You got what's your name down there at Godfrey? Uh, 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 what's her name? Aviana Nell. You got Chevelle down there, Split Phone. You got all these people. Get, sit down and try to get booked out through the year. Ain't no more prelims, baby. Oh, no. no. But Not a goddamn prelim. I'm being Houston for the So give me some bookings. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> but you know, but, but but you know, people do need to have a set Wait, um Dominique, hold on. I, I wanted to make certain that Chevelle heard me. I'll be in Houston for the Dupree reunion the last weekend of May, going to June. So give me some bookings. Oh okay. you okay. the last weekend in May going to June. Oh, they're having a fish fry. That oh, you're not coming to US of A then. I know that's in Dallas. Oh, he wants to do that no way. Because US of A is uh, what Memorial Day weekend? Hell no. Are I'm you coming to uh, US of A? Uh, you yeah. think I'm going to Dallas to see some queens and rhinestones and bees when I go to be nice, be nice. and see some boys? Be, be, be bees taking out your boot hole. Miss U.S. of A will be um, May 19th through the 24th in Dallas, Texas. May 19th and the 20th is Miss Gay U.S. of A Classic. The 21st okay. through the 24th is Miss Gay U.S. of A. It is my 10-year anniversary as Miss Gay U.S. of A Classic, so I will be there hosting all week long. And, um, yeah. And um, so we're going to go to commercial break, and we'll be right back. Commercial, uh, Coco, you, what you doing? Who is that? Mm. Who that is, Coco? Somebody looking for a mirror. I don't know. She said, okay. Somebody looking for a mirror. <laughs> yeah, they look like it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Come on, let's go. Okay, come, come this way. Ah, come this way. Come this way. No, come back. Mom, let's go see. No. Times is hard, man. I'm tired, bro. Every every time you turn around, you gotta pay bills, pay bills, pay bills. I'm tired of paying bills. I don't have it like that. Girl, every time I go to the mailbox, they got something. I don't have it like that. They, they got, got something. something. A new job. 
know? That's why I came over here this morning because I want you to help me. We're going to work from home and we ain't going to have no problems. Work from home? From over here? Yeah, from over here. We're going to work, work, work Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day. I'm going to come here at 7.30 every day, but, I, but I'm going to need you to be the, the main, you know, the head of the operation. What operation? Let me show you. An operation? What, that's a company? What is that, motherfucker? You want a Christmas? Do you yeah. want to have a good Christmas? I don't, I, <laughs> I don't know nothing about no fucking dope. All I know about some white powder they put in their fucking nose and they ain't coming to be house. I know damn well. I'm holding. I ain't holding that. Get away. Get away. Riga, what's you wrong with you? Hollering. People gonna come outside. You done lost your fucking mind. Bitch, get away from here right now. Go back where you sit. Mom, I, work from home. Work I'm from gonna home. tell them to come get it. Come get it. Come get it. No. They're gonna knock on your door. This is the last song. Who is Jill Stop? Words and Sounds Volume 1. The fuck? I sang 16 songs already. <laughs> That's a bonus. Hey, everybody. It's me, Dion. Yeah. <laughs> she said, hey, it's me, Dion. Hey. <laughs> Girl, honey, uh, Facebook is blowing up about this album. Did you listen to it, Chevelle? I had it this morning, Chad. What you think? What, you do, what album? Beyonce's new album is out. Uh, it came out. It, it came out at midnight, but I got it today. Uh, Chad ain't number uh, Beyonce with some banjo beats. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and number be out there with some banjo beats, honey. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's all it is, honey. Be out there with some banjo beats. She uh, she did like Jolene and some other stuff. But I want to hear Jolene. Y'all gonna live. Um, what was I finna ask y'all before I go? Oh, Braves and your people, bitch. If I tell you that tickles the shit out of me. So listen. I'm gonna ask y'all one more question and then we uh, one more question. You finna go. Where was it at? Oh, because it was funny to me, and I really want to hear Neil. Uh, what was it? You high too? Oh. Does, uh, <laughs> does, 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 you say you, high, you say you high too, mean in addition to who else high? Who else high? No, my baby daddy. Oh, uh, okay. He's fucked up right now. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> someone else to win. Does wanting someone else to win mean that you are rooting for the downfall of someone else? Why do people see? I love that question. I love that question. You said what? Does wanting someone else to win meaning that you are rooting for the their downfall of the downfall of someone else? Why do people see it that way? No, it does not because, like, even at Black America, Fonzie, me and Fonz, Fonz, he always says, I'm his favorite nephew. I was like, this is my favorite uncle. I want him to win the pageant. Quentin is also my brother. I'm like, if Quentin won, Quentin, great job. So it's not that I'm against you. This is like you have relationships with people. And if one or two or three of my friends win, I'm I'm happy for those individuals. So, Good in your diamond. Well, I, I don't think uh, I don't think it uh, it don't it don't change. You know, I don't think it changed that anything about how I feel about you or whatever. I have somebody else in the page, and you know, I so can't. You know, know, one person can win. Only one person can win, and hopefully, in, in your case, like with your case, but like if I got one bitch in the race, bitch, I'm rooting for her. That's it. That's it. You know, or him. You know. So, Mick, you got to teach me how to eat a chicken leg like that. Oh, I'll teach you. But, uh, Dominique, what, what do you but it's, but it's a turkey leg. Ooh. <laughs> oh, God. No. God, 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 God. Yeah, you know, I, I, I guess I just don't understand that because 
somebody that may be your cup of tea and then maybe somebody but I like that person but there's somebody else that I like just because I'm rooting for that other person that I like doesn't mean that I'm rooting against you. It's meaning that I want this person to do well also. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and I think that that's just what, that's just something that we have picked up that if we're not rooting for your favorite or somebody that's the heavy favorite, they think that that means that we're hating on that person. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just want it. You're just wanting somebody else to be successful. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that we're saying, "Bitch, that's I hope you mean. lose." Right, and, then, and sometimes you lose. we may be saying it. We may be but saying it. Unless I have like two kids competing against each other, I always know or have somebody who I want to win over the other person. And Polit- you know, politically correct and say, "Oh, this is my mom, my auntie, my best friend, X, Y, Z, competing against each other," but I always know who I want to win but mm-hmm. because I want them to win not because I think they're better than you it's because of the relationship I have with them it's funny because um, even when I won I, I never forget when I won kind of the plus uh, uh, someone told me that a person that he, he don't live here anymore but um, he was like uh, he was one of the, the, the main people that was from here that was as a male entertainer and when I want to come in plus. He didn't think I won. And so uh, he was one of the people I like looked up to and, and wanted to, you know, be like because he was doing his thing in the industry. Uh, it didn't hurt my feelings. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's how you feel. That's how you feel. Yeah. And you're entitled to that. You might just see it for me. Yeah. And that's okay. And that is okay. And that's what people you know, that's that's how you feel about me. People don't understand that it's okay for somebody not to see it. And I you. think, and I think that question stems from like this. This, I saw people when Giselle, of course, Giselle is most people's favorite, and I saw the post people saying, "Y'all bitches so fake," and in a sense, well, you know, don't be congratulating her. Y'all the same person rooting against her. I don't think people understand that everybody ain't there for the same person. You know, I, I think Raquel Lord is the top premier entertainer, but when her and Tanisha ran against each other in Black America, I did not want Raquel to win. And that's just how I felt. That didn't, and that don't mean that I think she was a horrible person. I, I can't love her. If that mask covered up in her face, you would have saw something different, huh? You say what? If Raquel would have came up with her mask, with her face covered up, you would have saw something different, right? No, but but what I'm saying is, uh huh. Would you saw something different? <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, is that people come with who they come with, and they you ride. Definitely they saw ride. something different, friend. Yeah, and now I'm still what I'm to say. You definitely saw something different. So yeah, you was everyone in place then. I was telling you, I've been out for years. They weren't out then, but I'm just saying, like you, you know, you're you know, try to rattle people like that to make people feel like that that everybody's against them. Yeah. They have their fucking favorites too. Everybody ain't trapped to see one person. This weekend at Continental Elite and Plus, they're going to be going up for a, a myriad of people. Like They love who they love and they want to win who they want to win. Everybody can't win. Everybody can't, everybody win. can't win. And I want the bitch to win who's going to have on a Dare Queen swimsuit. <laughs> Shout out to Chris and Deluxe. She's not ready. She's she not ready. ready. She's not ready. <laughs> <laughs> she had Marilyn Monroe on that year. She had the Dairy Queen on for top five. Bitch. I well, couldn't stop laughing because I couldn't believe she made the top five. And what I used to be a huge Trissy Deluxe fan. What about that stunt she did, baby? Uh, I thought she was going to win one year. Plus this weekend, huh? Will you be at Cutting on the Plus this weekend? Yeah, I'll be there this weekend. Well, I'll see you this weekend. I'll see you on Tuesday. I'll be there Tuesday. Uh, okay, okay. Y'all Good. have fun Good there. Other days, okay. Yes, I'll be there on Tuesday. So um we will be um I'll be doing our point of view from Chicago on Wednesday. Ooh, uh, Chicago. Yes. So we want to thank y'all for tuning in. We know we ran over and um uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm just now realizing what time it is. But we've been gone, we've been gone. We had to catch up and do some and talk about some things. And we want to thank y'all for tuning okay. in. And, and we didn't even get to a lot of our journal, we didn't even get to most of our journal topics, so we, we got just- to- we uh, we gonna definitely bring them up next week. We still got pants and stuff next week, so we go. I'm sure after next week, these these topics gonna have to fall on over to that. 
<laughs> to to bed pads too. So we're gonna be talking about it. But I want to I want to encourage y'all to please go and subscribe to Chevelle Blue seventy five because you will get the notifications that we are live because my page um will probably still be down next week and um it won't be um let nobody notify y'all that we are live on our point of view page or my page so go subscribe to chevelle brooks 75 on youtube we thank you so much for coming in so uh to our point of view we appreciate y'all so much y'all um do your thing and, and please be safe out there and we love y'all for free always see y'all next week and the world of nikki bonnet go vote yeah and please go back happy birthday time of all <laughs> Happy birthday, Tommy. Happy birthday, Tommy. Oh. Happy birthday. The, the crew. And Shaka Khan. And Chevelle Brooks. And Erica Badu. I gotta go. I gotta go. God, honey, they had tuned in, baby. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. 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 If I tell you the kids had came in and tuned in tonight, baby, yes they did, honey. I hope y'all got y'all just call. Guess what, baby? I got mine. I can tell y'all one thing. Y'all better tune in next week, baby, for the next episode of the Boom Boom Show. I gotta go. Uh, uh, honey, I gotta go. Yes, God, honey, they had tuned in, baby, 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 baby. Honey, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta.